what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Welcome back, everybody, for some more SPTV Monday Night Live. Uh, we have two returning guests and one new guest this evening. Let's start with the new guest, bottom left-hand corner, Adam Pyers. How's it going, Adam? Hello. Doing good? <laughs> Let me just show everyone real quick, remind everyone, any uh, longtime viewers of the channel, you and I did an interview, a three-and-a-half-hour beast. Yes, sir. T Ten months ago, just around when I started uploading every day. Uh, we didn't even put chapter breaks in on this thing. I can't believe anybody watched it. Not, not only that, it's almost at 100,000 views. It's <laughs> <That's> pretty insane. <laughs> Prob probably because they had to keep coming back to finish watching the thing. Anyway, it's a great right. interview for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh, by the way, the title of the interview, um, Adam Pyers, his journey into Scientology, the Celebrity Center, the Navy, and out of Scientology. You are one of the few people, one of the few Scientologists who joined the military. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we talk a lot about that in the interview. Mm -hmm. um, of course, on the top right-hand corner, we have Doug Kramer from Dazed But Not Confused. And on the bottom right, we have Nora Ames from Oh No, Nora. Um, I did create the little banners for everyone. So for Adam, you want to subscribe to Adam's YouTube channel is Adam the Angler. Uh, for Doug, we have Doug on YouTube, Dazed But Not Confused. Doug, I, I searched YouTube today for just at DBNC and... Uh, it gave me a whole bunch of nonsense in the search results. So some people might have to actually just search the whole thing, dazed but not confused. And then, oh my God, where's Ono Nora? What? My As banner usual, for Ono. The gay is left out. It's Pride oh, Month. Jesus. This is oh, a hate Jesus. Crime, Aaron. Hold on, hold That's on. That's right. Hold it might have been suppressed on my yeah, YouTube. <laughs> Subscribe to Nora. And, at, and the it, comments are going to start flying in that we're arguing already, Aaron. Everyone, just know that Aaron and I have literally known each other for almost 30 years. We are never arguing. I just want to get that disclaimer out at the beginning of the live. Aaron and yeah. I are never arguing. We literally love each other so much, like brother and sister, no matter what Aaron's facial expression looks like at any point while I'm talking. We love each other. Moving on. Okay, uh, okay so let's see. <laughs> Subscribe to O. Oh. Subscribe to Nora on YouTube at Oh No Nora. And That's I, have, the right... I have Mike with us. He's right here. Oh, nice. You want to got say a couple of words? I got Bobble there. Mike right here. There you go. Yes. Let me um, just since we are doing SPTV, let me um, do a little reminder and share this little screen right here. Reminder, everyone. Uh, SPTV OG Mike Rinder is uh, getting treatment for some advanced stage uh, cancer. Uh, we've done some videos about it. We've done some uh, fundraising for uh, the treatment. I just wanted to remind everybody they can go to Mike Render's blog. There's a donate button at the top. And um, I'm only going to share public information that Mike and Chrissy themselves has or have already made public. And um, they haven't given any updates other than the fact that they were able to start get Mike started on the treatment. Remember, these treatments tend to make you feel shittier before they make you feel better that's just kind of the nature of these treatments so yeah. we shouldn't we shouldn't be expecting some some uh, some magic uh magical turnaround but um when there is an update to be given uh, and they give it i'll certainly um uh help uh spread that spread that word so um what's going on in the world of scientology this week you guys um oh i, I know what i wanted to talk about i did a video earlier today about tom cruise and about david miscavige <sighs> Treating Tom Cruise as someone who he sort of has to put on a show for, ha has to, has to, has to convince Tom that things are better than they really are. And and, mm -hmm. and Dave does seem. There's many examples I can think of where little little tiny Captain Dave does seem to treat Tom as someone <laughs> he needs to impress yeah. instead of someone that he wants to bring into the fold and really see the nitty gritty and as I like to say, see how the sausage is made. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What do you guys think from your own perspectives, your own experience? What do you think Tom knows and what do you think Tom doesn't know? Go I, ahead. I think there's, I think it's twofold. I think that there's a public face to what Tom is shown and what uh, the other CIRG members think that Tom knows. And I think that probably privately Dave gives him a top secret briefing about um, other things, right? Like, for example, whenever Tom would come to Celebrity Center, often Dave would be there um, in tandem. So it'd be like a, a dual 
big deal type situation. We'd have to white glove top to bottom because Tom was coming in town and that meant probably Dave would be somewhere following close behind um, or nearby or some art, multiple art you know, or something to report on Tom's experience. Something right. just happened to your mic. Something happened to my mic? Oh, that sounds better. That's better? Okay, I will. I will get I will get very close and get uh, very serious. Um, so, in those cases, um, you know, it would be like a whole, you know, shit storm for us at CC, where it would be really bad for us, you know, like a, you know, two or three days cleaning and all of that kind of stuff for him to literally do a five minute walkthrough and just point at things and be like, yes, yay. Or if he was staying for quite a while, like when he was on the PSSC course, that was a nightmare. Um, because we have like a small guys, is it just me or is there something wrong with Nora's mic? Nora, that's it might be the air, air conditioner if that's yours. It's right. I don't have an AC out. on. Who's that's got not the me. AC on? Uh, then that's not you. Maybe it's just not me. a little bit closer to the mic. I don't know why. Maybe it's picking up an alternate signal I don't or know. something. Yeah, it sounds like it's kind of cutting out or something. Like it's not. I don't know. I hear myself yeah. great. I don't there know. you go. I mean, it sounds Maybe good right internet now. Connection. Yeah, I will just stay <laughs> here forever. Um, so yeah. That's that's how that would go. But then oftentimes, you know, like when he had to go to gold just with Nicole, they planted that whole field of tulips just so in case he wanted to run through the tulips with Nicole, um, they planted those and that took like two weeks and then he he didn't even look at them. So, you know, like ridiculous things. But, you know, like it's touted that they're best friends. They go to the races. They go do all this other stuff. And, you know, I'm sure there's moments where Dave has gone to his Telluride home and all that other stuff to give him the briefing because he is the most dedicated Scientologist on the planet and has said, you know, things to him, you know, in his public speeches, yada, yada, where it indicates that he has some sort of inside knowledge um, of what's happening in Scientology, or he thinks he does, you know, of what the operation is inside the church, why it's so urgent that we get these things done. So I don't know, you know, if he's being shown some special, you know, Sea Org only bulletins that public aren't shown. Do you know what I mean? Which we've seen as Sea Org members, Aaron, some, you know, Sea Org only, um, you know, special things that tell you, you know, the whole world's going to blow up tomorrow if we don't, you know, get all the SP, uh, you know, psychiatrists handled in 10 minutes, uh, you know, kind of BS type of things. So I'm sure he's shown those things. You know, whereas regular public aren't privy. So that makes yeah. him extra special. What do you guys think? Do you think Tom <clears throat> do you think Tom knows the true size of Scientology or the true direction of the stats? Do you think Dave is sharing those that kind those kind of details with him? I highly doubt it. I'm sure he just sees what everyone else sees at the events, you know, these huge bolsterous numbers that are obviously fabricated lies. That would be my guess anyways. What do you think, Doug? Do you, I, I, and actually, now that I think about it, it would be almost inconceivable for Tom to ask Dave a question that would imply Tom thought the numbers in the events were false. Like if Tom couldn't go to Dave and be like, what's the real number, Dave? Oh, tell me. Because <laughs> that, that, he couldn't do that. No, he'd be like labeled a SP like right away or something. Probably. Well, probably not that, but I'm sure he'd be sent to get a psych check or something. Wouldn't that be funny if Dave and Tom had a, had a little falling out, had a little spat, and Tom was ordered to sec checking, and Dave was like, the, uh, actually, do you remember? Do you remember? Marty Rathman even told this story that when he was sent to go sec check uh, Tom, uh, I guess uh, in the Eyes Wide Shut era, that mm -hmm. it, the EP was going to be considered whether Tom called Dave. <laughs> and wow. that's because he was leaving Scientology, because he was wow. leaving Scientology for Nicole. That was after the Vanity Fair article came out. And instead of telling the world Scientology was the greatest thing since sliced bread, wow. He said, if you want to know about Scientology, read a book. And that was all he said about Scientology in that article. He refused to discuss it. And so Tommy Davis held that article up like, he's promoting books, y'all, because he hadn't read the um, article. So he thought, oh, he's promoting LRH books. 
And then other people read the article and they were like, no, dumb, dumb. He's refusing to talk about Scientology. He's basically leaving the church. And then RTC went into action and sent Marty to go audit him. And that's when Nicole got found out as she's pulling him away from the church because she was like, "Uh oh, hot dog. This shit's a cult. Get this guy out of here and get our kids out of here before shit hits the fan because she knew. And then that was when Operation Get This Bitch Out of the House started. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that's why it's called. Maybe, but <laughs> probably what Dave changed it to. Operation Suck My Dick on Hollywood Boulevard or something. Oh my god! <laughs> Come on now. Oh my he's god. probably actually changed those Nora to that. Why not? He's just I don't know. Crazier. I mean, we've all seen the picture of Nicole as she exited the divorce proceedings when she finally got divorced from Tom, and she's like dancing. Yeah. Like, you I've know, always wondered freedom. if that was real or if someone. Just I know people to... say that's the picture oh, of her. Be? I don't. Yeah. I don't think that's actually the picture of her from then because she lost her kids in that divorce. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't an think. I don't think that that's the picture of her in that moment. I wouldn't be dancing like that if I lost yeah. my children. Yeah. Do you guys think her kids actually disconnected from her? Because I've always said I don't believe they did. Yes. If they disconnected from her, I just don't believe that she would have kept her mouth shut about Scientology all these years. She I think she did NDA, it in a hope that sure. she was going to get her kids back because as a mom, you will do anything to get your kids wow. back. And I think she n never spoke of it again, thinking I, they will come back to me one day as a mom. Wow. I a hundred percent believe that. And I think she thought if I tow the line, Tom will bring them back to me. If I'm a good girl. Have if you been I under the impression, thing. Doug, that, that they actually, I mean, I'm just, like your impression over the years, have you been under the impression that her kids actually disconnected from her or that they just treated her as like yeah, a I do, fair roads, fair weather. No, I think Tom Cruise follows policy to the letter. And like Nora said, and we were talking about earlier, he's kept in that Truman show, literally the Truman show where his reality is managed by Dave. Like we were talking about to hoorah the events, to bring him on in the free winds, to freaking you saw what they did by sending Rathbun in, you know, to control, to get him away from Kidman. I think he um, is kept in the dark. Nora has the best intel in you because you guys were on staff behind the scenes, but I ran with the B and C level actors. So even though they weren't treated like Tom, nowhere near it, they were deaf. We were housed, man. We were um, we went to all the events and everything, but we got to go to the special floors. We, well, I never made it to the president's office. I was just about I got invited and then I woke up one, you know, the next day, basically. But I ran with all these people and they're they're kept even more closeted. This is why, the you know, if you want to get in the Masterson thing or something, you know, they're really kept housed, Aaron. And at Tom Cruise's level, man, he stage manages everything down from the staff that he has to what he sees. And I have no idea what he, if even Masterson came onto his radar, I'd be curious to be a fly on the wall to see how they'd handle that. But he's definitely kept the most insulated. And that's why Tom, that's why Dave puts on these events for him, man, to keep him satisfied he's the most valuable scientologist and so he's going to be stage managed like a mofo in the truman show man yeah mm -hmm. but uh, help me understand this guys <clears throat> i know we've heard marty rathbun tell the story that connor and isabella were told that nicole is an sp because they yes. said that they said oh our mom's an sp but even at that time they hadn't disconnected from her and my question is this though what suppressive act did Nicole Kidman commit that would be warranted being declared a suppressive be, being declared a suppressive person or being disconnected from? She's never spoken negatively about Scientology. She's never said one bad word about Tom Cruise or Scientology. What in the hell are we to believe she was declared and disconnected for? Because she was trying to get Tom to leave. Oh, I was going to say during that, that eyes wide shut seen. era, she was literally right. pulling him away from Scientology. That's it. That's right. That's right. Mm. And she stopped. And if OT you look too. at his actions at that time, he wasn't promoting. He wasn't talking to Dave. He wasn't doing any sign. He wasn't actively doing or promoting Scientology. He was being a dad, and he was just focusing on movies. He was he was like living a life. Oh my god! I know. Like so, yeah. her suppressive act was essentially not really wanting to continue to be a Scientologist. Yeah, she got. O she was OT. She went OT. She did. She got through she OT five. OT2. She stopped at OT2. She was never it even OT2? did. Yeah. I that's also part of it, by the way, because she was becoming disaffected with Scientology. Okay. I don't know what she would have I thought would she got to OT5, but maybe no. I'm totally wrong. 
Yeah. And nobody ever stops at OT2. I mean, you're yeah, going to not get weird. the OT3 secret. So she was becoming disaffected, I believe. Well, she, she, she got to OT2 and was like, this is some BS. Look, so good for her. She didn't even yeah. have to do OT3. Exactly. <laughs> she, I, she's probably she's just doing smart. it because Tom, Tom was pushing it on her. I don't like, I don't think she was a, she was not a dedicated full on Scientologist like her husband. Yeah. She was trying, though. I mean, to get all the way to the OT levels, you have to go through massive sack checks to get up there. She made it through clear. You know, they she was fast tracked her, though, trying. Nora. She got up there well, in like did. a freaking year because, like, a celebrity, they absolutely. Because I, Laura, well, I yeah. had to pay like endless money and they would kept me on the get grade four is like a hundred thousand dollars or something. She paid, but Nicole, she paid they, her oh, money. she did, but they they moved her up there in like a yeah. year. She literally went from the bottom to OT2 in about a year. But you can crazy. do that if you're doing nothing but auditing, though, Doug. True. If That's you're just doing point. nothing but auditing and you're in there full time, which is she had a dedicated auditor and you're not doing yeah. anything else, absolutely yeah. you can't. Yeah. Because they advertise that. That's true. And one in a million can do it if you have the money. And like you said, you have all day to do it. Yeah. yeah. I made it through grade three in a month going full time. Say what? From Are you guys kidding me, man? Right I got now. reamed at the mission. Doug, can I? <laughs> but also, you have, there's certain criteria. Well, yeah. Their, their criteria is you have to be, you know, like, you know, all these things. And, you know, if, if also, if they run a milk you for a lot too, they're going to, throw in a lot of other things for you. I so. only found that afterwards. Nora, I did the LX list. I did the int rundown. Oh, honey. Times. They, they, they put me through everything. And they wouldn't let me go to AO to go do the rest of the levels. They, they yeah. squeeze as much money out of my family as they possibly could. And yeah. I only discovered that not too long ago. I trusted yeah. them, man. I thought mm -hmm. they did things standardly. You know? Well, that was standard. They were just, you know, <laughs> they wanted point. you to squeeze yeah. as much money out as you can. Yeah, of course. <laughs> The irony was lost on me, though, Nora. Holy shit, man. It just sucks learning all this shit as the layers come off. All right. Well, before we get into um, answering the questions portion of the video, um, Adam, for those who didn't already watch our three and a half hour um, extravaganza interview um, mm -hmm. almost a year ago, give everyone the nutshell version of your Scientology experience um, when you got in, what you did, kind of just uh, just a short version. And by the way, your, yeah. your, your mic seems a little funky. What do you mean? How so? Is it, it it's just a little far away. I can move it closer, maybe, but I'm just trying to keep it out of the camera. Aaron, people are going to scream at you in the comments if you give them any shit about his mic. He, he, he's Why? a little, uh, he's a little bit uh, just because they do. I don't know. They pick up on anything. Yeah. He, I think I think he's saying just it's bring a your bit mic closer. Adam, you're trying closer. to keep your mic out of the camera. Yeah. Because it's that's like very closer. It's very unusual. I'm also trying to see you guys at the same time. So. By the way, where's? Yeah. So your screen is nowhere near your camera. Uh, well, I have my camera on top of one of my screens. I have two screens, and I got I got the camera on one of these, so or the microphone. On All one right, of these so things. just for the hell of it, just pull yeah. that mic right close to your face, and let's see what it sounds like. All right, how's this? Is that better? Oh wow, we can hear you. Oh, Woo! Okay. okay. The thing is that I can't really see you. Let me. <laughs> but you don't have to see us. We can. I try to keep you. it open out of the way so I can see my screen. That's the thing. Um, I'd rather hear you. Yeah. All right. Anyways, yeah. So I got involved in. 2005, found out about it from reading a Reader's Digest with Tom Cruise in it. And oh, there you go. Joined, yeah, joined <laughs> the Navy a couple of years after. I didn't get really that involved. Did the Navy for four years, got out of the Navy, and then I was having a hard time readjusting, basically, to civilian life and got back into Scientology and moved out to L.A. and attended CC and made it up to finishing grade three. I started grade four and then ran out of money and got out. So that's the, that's the summary. Aaron, would you mind if I ask Greg one quick question? I just have to know. Would you mind? I don't want to step over you, man. I just have to no, know. No, of course. Go ahead. My dad was in the Navy, and I often wondered if that had to do, because, you know, the Sea Org mimics the Navy, and so much of Scientology is like paramilitary. Mm -hmm. Was that part of why you, uh, was that attractive to you, or was that even a part of it when you were at CC and you got, you know, thrown Actually, out? Actually, for me, I mean, the whole time I was there, like for me, I, I kind of, in hindsight, I look at it as I was like giving it an honest try, but I was always mm -hmm. skeptical because I didn't grow up in it. You know, I grew up Catholic. So, um, the, the whole, the whole like Navy aspect actually kind of was a little off putting for me right. because, you know, for me, I was actually a third class petty officer exactly. and I when I would see someone with PO one or CPO and I'd be like, you're not a chief, you're not a first class petty. You don't know what it takes to earn that rank like in, in the real world, in the actual military. So that was a little off-putting to me. Um, but I was, I don't know, I was always just a nice guy when 
you know, when it would come up, you know, because sometimes I would see it on a Sea Org member's name tag or something. Like, oh, payoffs are first class, you know. Oh, how do you know that? You know, were you in the Sea Org? And it's like, no, I was in the actual Navy. Wow, I would have been pissed, He wasn't bro. in the fake wow. space Navy, guys. He was in the yeah, real Yeah, he actually Navy. did the real thing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you must have been a nice guy because that would really piss me off. I mean, you know? yeah, I mean, I, I definitely uh, one of those people that will hold, withhold my judgment sometimes and maybe sometimes not. Man. But <laughs> yeah. Wow. Awesome. All right. Well, that's a good little intro for everyone. Let's uh, jump into the comments. By the way, you guys can all see the comment feed, right? Okay, um, good. So if any yeah. of you guys are looking at the live chat, because, you know, there's the section that automatically stars the super chats, and we usually never even get to all the super chats. So I'm just going to focus on those. But if you guys see non-super chats that you want to address, star them, and it'll throw them into the comment feed, and then I can bring them up on screen, okay? Gotcha. All righty yo. Okay, Donna Cooper, just to say hello to Aaron. Thank you, Donna. Thank you very much. Elizabeth Marino. I know manipulative liars and David Miscavige's stories. Tom Cruise knowing about abuses, wanting to join the Sea Org, sound like similar BS. Maybe y'all never thought to question it. I don't I don't know what the, do you guys understand what this is asking? Mm. Tom Cruise knowing about abuses, wanting to join the Sirix sound like some of Maybe we thought, maybe we never thought to question it. Question what? Um, like joining the Sea Org. Um, I, as a kid growing up, uh, I questioned it all the time. However, it uh, was much harder to not question. Like, I, I never questioned the um like the things like we were talking about does he question like would he question david on the stats and the like size of scientology i never questioned that because that i didn't have a way to do that i mean i grew up in the 70s and 80s and 90s so we you guys have to recall i, I don't know how old you are elizabeth but there was no internets um in the 80s and 90s so we didn't have like a way to qualify these things in the same way that we do now with Google search and stuff like that. So when Scientology told us they were the fastest growing religion in the world, um, I took that as fact. Um, and when they told me they had X number of members in the world, that was facts. Um, in, in the same way that any other religion told me, you know, all the good deeds that the Catholic religion was doing. Um, I took that as fact too. Um, and now we know, you know, the Catholic religion has many dark sides mm -hmm. and lots of stuff was going on. Um, you know, uh, I was also a child, so I didn't like have a lot of reasons to question those things. Um, I had bad feelings about it. I, I've learned since to like trust my gut. I think about things that I, I wasn't, um, as a kid, but I mean, you know, Adam got in from a Reader's Digest article. So also the news and, you know, reporters and things were only talking about the the fluffy side of Scientology, except for the Time Magazine article, um, which of course I read in high school, um, which I thought I was going to die after I read it. Um, you know, you know, because if you find out about OT stuff before you're OT, you could possibly die. And then of course, after I read it and I didn't die, my dad was like, so does that what do you think that means? Maybe you were OT in your last life. And then that fucked me Are up. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. oh my God. Oh my we God. do a whole yeah. live just about my father trying to convince me that I was no an OT way. in my last lifetime. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Me yeah. too. I'm with my father. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. They probably knew each other. So, yeah. Uh, undoubtedly. Yeah, I, undoubtedly. Um, you don't know me oh. and you were a brother and sister in the last life, Norm? Yeah. Oh, I, my, had that, I had that cognition Absolutely. years ago. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, I'm glad we found each other that. again, Doug. Yeah, exactly. Aaron, Aaron brought us together, who was also I knew in a past life. No, we're not supposed to discuss our case. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. I think uh, we don't, I mean, as kids of the cult, you don't, you just grow up knowing Scientology is the best thing since sliced bread, basically. You know, so that just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that or you're suppressive. That's, nice. That's the simple answer. So, Adam, in, in the the few years, uh, how many years total would you say you spent in Scientology? I mean, I guess we could say like 2005 to 2018, so like 13. But really, mm. 2013 to 2018 was, you know, when I was going to CC. So like five, six years there. So when you would see the events, um, the international events, whatever, any CC gala events, whatever, did you suspect that the information that you were hearing was BS? Um... 
Just be honest. <laughs> kind of. It was like a. Did you really? Because I, I never. Well, I never did. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I had. Uh, I was dating uh, someone who worked for CCHR, mm. and I started becoming skeptical of the numbers, like halfway through, basically, because um, she told me that CCHR was lying about their numbers, and she knew just from working there. So. Then I started, and then I started thinking like, man, if they're saying there's like 10 million members or 20 million, whatever the numbers were, I was like, why doesn't it seem like it's not more mainstream like other religions? You know, it's just odd to me. And, and, and the only thing you do see is just negative headlines, you know? Right. So uh, I, I would say, uh, yeah, I, 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 I kind of believed him at first and then started to not believe it as more time went on. Cool, yeah. All right, Jerry No Dean, aka Sarasota Jerry. Hi, Aaron. Can you briefly discuss the concept of fair use on YouTube channels? Hashtag Team Mike. Well, I mean, this isn't a YouTube tutorial. Um, <laughs> generally speaking, on YouTube, you can use whatever content you want as long as you're changing it, um, adding to it, altering it, um, commentary. You can't just steal material and rebroadcast it. You can. Um, you have to repurpose it in some way. And uh, that's that's fair use. And also, YouTube won't automatically strike you for using someone's content. Um, the other person has to strike you. So you could sample content from someone else's video, and unless they're going to go out of their way to submit a complaint to YouTube about you, uh, you're going to be fine. And even if they do submit a complaint about uh, what you've done, as long as what you've done is with uh, you, you've modified it, you've altered it, no one could ever mistake it for the original. That's actually a key point. Nobody could ever actually mistake what you've done for the original. Um, so those are some of the, the highlights. So thank you for asking. Um, Cassandra Reiner's dug in the house. I've been binging his videos all weekend. Love Thanks, this, Cassandra. Man. Nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, hockey's books and storytellers. Uh, can any or all of you recount the story of the mission holders being stripped of their earnings? Bobble Rinder is with me. Uh, this was before my time, guys. I'm assuming it was before mm -hmm, your guys' too. time as well. Are you guys talking about the? If this person is asking about the Davis mission situation back in NorCal, this is like late '70s. Uh, the only thing I know about that—that's where my dad got into Scientology. Um, he was one of the Davis people. Um, they were trying to basically form their own special unit of Scientology when things were getting solidified. Scientologically, and they were not liking the direction that everything was going, essentially. And the GO was coming down hard. That's the Guardian's office was coming down hard and slamming in ethics um, across the board. And basically, they were they were trying to go rogue. They were trying to like be like, we are the real Scientology. We are pure Scientology. We're delivering real Scientology, and we're gonna we're gonna keep it pure. And we don't want to do this class five or color blue and we don't like this new structure and, and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, um, they, it was a whole network of missions in Northern California. They were very, very strong. They're actually the most profitable arm of Scientology at the time. And, um, they basically went in, raided all these missions and shut them down uh, because they were just like going to, in, in the eyes of the the powers that be at the time, destroy the the good works, you know, basically the real estate scam, and uh, they weren't obeying the structure that was being put in place. Then, of course, right after that, Operation Snow White happened, and then the GO was shut down, and then uh, the new structure came in from, you know, how they reorganized everything. Um, and so they couldn't have this other rogue operation that was, they were making a boatload of money, and they weren't tithing upwards to the management. That was the real problem, is they weren't sending their share of money upwards. And so they got, they got shut down because they wanted to keep their money. <laughs> <laughs> which they thought was appropriate. They're like, why are we sending you money? We're doing the yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything that mm. happened with the mission holders, I think is just one of, one of the prime examples of Scientology's complete, uh, whether you're talking about Miscavige or any other Scientology manager, complete inability to think and plan long-term and only handing, handling um, or, or thinking of things in terms of present time emergencies. Yeah. Because what they did was to completely decimate the, the, um, 
the the organizations that were actually getting the most people into Scientology. Yeah. And, and right? people and were enthusiastic about it. They loved it. People loved missions. The, uh, you know, they were these own little subcultures. Yeah. That's um, how I got in. That's how that's you got almost, in? What mission? Yeah, I started at a mission, Albany. What? In, oh, in oh, Albany. Really? That's right. Yeah. That's wow. Albany. Yeah. Wow, really? <laughs> We've never met anyone that got into a mission. <laughs> I haven't. Because, like, <laughs> And you're, Aaron, you make such a whoever made that point, Nora. You know they are. It's like evil contains within it the seeds of its own destruction. Yeah. Because you know what, they can't help but shoot themselves in the foot. And if you try yeah. to understand it logically, it doesn't make sense. They're so short term, yeah. like you said, Aaron. And so they always do things where the public and even the Scientologists are going, "What do you mean?" But for David Miscavige, he he has no future. Everything is an emergency now, now, now. As you guys mm -hmm. know, being in the Sea Org, where every day your ass is on fire. You know. Yeah, oh yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay, the Wanderer says, I went to get vegan food for some guests at work and stumbled across Nora in the wild. What? I was the idiot staring. Oh, wow. Where, <laughs> oh, where was that? I, I get stared at all the time. So I for, <laughs> forgive me for not knowing that that was you staring at me. I would have said hello. Well, so now, now I've got to wonder whether the staring occurred at the vegan location or on the way to and fro the vegan location. Were you um, hanging out my... at a vegan hotspot lately? No. I, well, there's so many. Pl uh, listen, I live in the Portland metro area. Like everywhere serves meat and vegan. So, you know, it's just uh, vegan. You could throw a dart and hit a vegan place here. I mean, literally. Now I need to know where I was. Uh, shoot me an email and tell me where I was at uh, Oh No it's it, it there's a lot of o's in the no it's o dot n o o o dot nora at gmail and tell me where i was i want to know nice that's exciting inquiring uh, minds want to know pam says have named my pet florida jumping spider a a ron as like <laughs> as like his namesake always makes me smile with love so wait a second wait a second wait a second <laughs> But I what? bet he has more hair than you. <laughs> what is a Florida jumping spider? I, I, I've never. It heard doesn't it. sound good. It sounds like it'll jump on you. And also, <laughs> wouldn't you want to name Scientology spider. after the spider? More appropriate. What? And why jumping. would the Florida jumping spider make you smile? I mean, I some people have spiders as pets. I get it, but what does this look like? Oh my god. Are you it's like it those little ones that do the little dance and they're like oh, and they have like oh. four eyes and they're they're very hairy. So like I said, it has more hair than you. Oh my, oh god. my god. I don't suppose we can see a picture of a Florida jumping spider. <laughs> oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, are you looking at one, Nora? I am. Yeah. Do you want to share it? Do you want to are you able to share it? I will. Let me see. She if can I toss can it just... over to you, I think. And then you can share it. Oh my god, it's amazing. I will. Oh wow. I will do you know how to share thing. it? I, I, I'm going to figure it out in just a second. I have to just pull up a picture and then just get just the picture. Let's All see right. here. I can do it. Florida. Does the spider that, have a beard? Look at the little face. It's a, oh, well, I, I want to get one like, without the, like without food in its mouth. Hang on. Well, he, here. I'm trying to find one where they're not eating. There it is. All right. Okay. It's Florida adorable. Oh, wow. It's actually a very aesthetic spider. Wow. Right? Wow. Look that's at really it. Amazing looking. That is beautiful. But you have to look at look at that one right there at the top at the top wow. of your screen. Go back. Go back. Right. Get the green one right there. The green. Oh, on the left? Gosh. Yeah, on the cartoon. on the top left. There you go. Oh my yeah. gosh. If so I click on like it, it'll open up a separate tab so yeah. it won't work. So yeah. Well, I'm saying anyway, that's, that's, that's great. I never cute. thought I would think a spider was cute. Oh my gosh. That's great. Yeah, so <laughs> funny. I just like the fact that the spider's got a name. Um, there you go. Your name, Jeff. Jeff Hawkins in the chat now, guys. Jeff Hawkins, one of the few people who worked with David Miscavige at the international base for a long, long. In fact, guys, Jeff Hawkins was the one behind the Dianetics uh, infomercials in the eighties. The do, 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 right. do, 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 great do, commercial, do, do. Jefferson. Uh, was that a good? Did you guys like that baseline? Okay, um, That's Jeff amazing. Hawkins. Uh, <laughs> I think that Dave probably bragged to Tom about how he had to beat up SPs at the end base to position himself as a tough guy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, D Tom knows enough about Dave's behavior to have emulated Dave's behavior with his, his personal staff and those who work for him. Like he is 
a tyrant. Good point. You know, yeah, like you could even hear it in that coronavirus thing. thing. Remember mm-hmm. when he was going bonkers oh, on the people that he yeah. sounded exactly like Miscavige. Oh, yeah. When he was screaming at the top of his lungs at all those people, just make yeah. just, you know, trying to put a head on a pike there. And yep. you, you'll be done and you'll be, you'll be fired and you'll be fired. He was just uh, he sounded like Dave. A, he was literally his, channeling Dave. That was his best David Miscavige impersonation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, OK, what is this? M. Nancy 01. Hey, Aaron, are you and Mark and Claire not speaking anymore? I'm assuming you're asking that because of the, the live, the, the Monday night live streams. Um, no, you'll notice that Mark and Claire haven't even been uploading very much. Um, so, you know, with Mike Rinder being out of commission, uh, until further notice and Mark and Claire, they were doing a lot of family traveling. They're, do, they're doing a special project for the aftermath foundation. Um, no, it was just a good opportunity to highlight, uh, a bunch of other SPTV channels and even people who don't have channels. I've been inviting people on, uh, we still have to make this happen who, who are former Scientologists, who are the kind of people we'd all do interviews with, but who don't have their own channels. I want to get all those people involved in, in the Monday awesome. night live streams awesome. as well. So no, I mean, M Nancy Owen, come on now. Um, okay. Annie Kurtz. I'm hearing an echo. Does some, does someone not, I don't someone, have, I hear the, like a fan or something mm, quiet as a mouse here, computer. nor is good. I'll turn my mic down. See if that's no, good. it's fine, no, but, though. but I mean, you're wearing headphones, Adam, right? Your yeah. audio is not coming out of your speakers, right? No, no, it's not at all. I mean, my okay. my computer's like right here, but the fan's going. But I don't know if y'all are hearing that. The fan is no, what we hear, okay. I think. But I don't even see don't, lighting up though when I'm not that's talking. That's right, okay. fine. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, L. Jane Clifton Rizell. How much money does David Miscavige have to put into that cult, or does he get paid? Does he make fifty dollars a week? Um, Miscavige makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Um, I mean, I say hundreds because I'm accounting for inflation. Back in the 90s, he was paying himself a six-figure salary, about $100,000 is what I'm told. And he's the only person in the C organization who wasn't making $50 a week. Yeah. I mean, there's certain posts in the C org where depending on, you know, what's in fat at the time, you might be able to get cash bonuses of several hundred dollars per week. Like if you're a registrar, if you're a fundraiser, if you're an IAS registrar, um, usually you can get book commissions that will amount to hundreds of dollars per week. But even, I mean, Claire Headley or, uh, worked under David Miscavige. Her post in RTC at one point was internal exec RTC. She answered to Marty Rathbun, who answered to David Miscavige. So she's one of the most senior people in Scientology at that point. And she was still only making $50 a week. And don't so, forget the fact that he is one of the only, he is, well, he is the only CIRC member that lives in a mansion. Uh, which is on the int base. And then the only other people that ever lived off base were the author services people and bridge for a while. And then they went back to living in the big blue because they were like regs and stuff that were like, you know, traveling around selling books, but the author services people never lived like they were, cause they were doing all the book sales and stuff making. Yeah. The books. ASI people always had money. I wonder what their pay yeah. situation was like, but I think it comes down to cash bonuses, not salaries. Right. Right. And the regs too, for a while when they were getting like that crazy bonus structure on all the things they were selling, they were getting fat bonuses. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So David, uh, there you go. L Jane Clifton Rizal. Uh Quinton Hubbard would like to know, I love airplanes. What's your guy's favorite airplane? Um, I don't have a favorite airplane. Ones that don't crash is my my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> One that stay aloft for the whole flight. Does anyone have a favorite airplane? A DC nine, perhaps. I'm a I'm a fan <laughs> of the uh, the F thirty five. The F thirty five. Yeah, yeah, just because it's our newest fighter. <laughs> I prefer Xenus DC nines because they travel faster than the speed of right. light. Those are my favorite. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. Those are always That's reliable. The dumbest no thing what, in the primary. whole world. No shit. No shit. <laughs> DC nine. Sparkling dragon. Nora, tag this one. We love you. You're such a real down to earth, fun, amazing soul. I adore you. Thank you. I didn't tag that, but thank you, whoever tagged that. I tagged it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Thank you. I tagged it. <laughs> Look at her. Um, oh, my God. oh my gosh. All right. Selena Michelle. <laughs> all SPs in the house. Hit the like button. Hi, everyone. Love my SP TV. 
Oh, hey, we got thank about you, 24, Selena. We got about 2,400 people watching right now. If you guys haven't hit that like button, it's easy. It's fast. It's free, and it actually helps out the stream, believe it or not. Um, it does seem to help with notifications. That's my theory anyway. Mm -hmm. There's no hard evidence behind that. And don't forget um, to like it on all the channels if you haven't. Exactly. Exactly. All right. We have Maria de Jesus Gutierrez, one of my favorite names in the chat, um, on a tour of St. Monica's Catholic Church. Uh, the guide mentioned some celebrities who attended mass here, including Nicole and the kids. Was that in Tennessee there? Oh, oh, but she has other kids, though, with Keith. Correct. She has oh. two kids with, you know, uh, her hubby. With Keith Urban. Yes. Yeah. You guys are convinced that Nicole's that that Isabella and Connor actually disconnected from her. They don't just do the good roads, good weather. Honey, I would think good roads, good weather, but all right. So no, they, I, they she would say something. No, I would absolutely, they disconnected because she was not invited to Isabella's wedding when oh. Isabella got married in London. But apparently, neither was Tom. Tom wasn't there either. This is also correct, really? which was yeah. very scandalous. Hmm. And she got married to a Scientologist. Say it again. Which was odd. She got married to a, a guy who was on staff at London Org. Isabella did? Yes. Oh, yeah. And no, then I Tom wasn't know. even invited. And yeah, then Connor was like joining staff at LA Org for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what happened with that. And yeah. then there was like he did like a short sit in the Sea Org and then he became a DJ. You know, I, I do feel that if <laughs> Connor and Isabella were actually visiting Nicole they would post photos of it. There was some rumor that happened. I forget if it was like a year ago that Isabella had like reached out to Nicole and they were talking again. Yeah. But I'm, ho I'm listen as a mom, I'm always hopeful that families will reunite. I honestly think that is a million percent why Nicole has never said one bad thing about Tom Scientology her time in Scientology, she's just like, I don't talk about Bruno because she wants to get her kids back. And she considers the whole thing as if it didn't happen. Same thing with Katie. She is just barely said two seconds about it because I think as a, as a mom and ultimately she wants a reconciliation for her daughter to have a reconciliation with her father. Right. Um, and it, as as craptastic as Tom has been to Surrey um, as as a as a, a a woman who lost her biological father at the age of 19 um, to Scientology and to other things, I can say, you know, um, that that would be something that I would wish for as a mom and something else, you know, uh, even despite all of the things I went through. You know, I would still want my daughter to have her father in her life because, you know, whoever he is, you know what I mean? So if that meant I had to keep mum about all these other things, I would try to make that happen. You know what I mean? Uh, with conditions, of course. But you know what I mean? Like I would still want that for her. So I, I think these moms, Nicole and Katie, are trying to play the long game for their kids. Which is very hard because I'm sure they have some stories. I'm sure they could, you know, blow the lid off a lot of stuff, but they're trying to do the right thing for their children, which in the long run for them is more important than blowing up a, a teeny tiny religion, which is setting itself on fire. Dumpster fire. King yeah. Shane UK. Oh boy. Hey, 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 Ron, did you get and look at the link I sent? King Shane. You're going to have to be a little more detailed than that. <laughs> I mean, how would I know? How would I know? Nothing comes to mind, but I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Got it. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Brandy, <clears throat> I work in Ann Arbor, Michigan, near the U of M campus. I think there used to be a Scientology building there. I noticed there is a street called Sio Church Road. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Is it a thing for them to buy street names like this? That's really funny. So there used to be an org in Ann Arbor. This one, is Ann Arbor one of those orgs where they their ideal org building is like nowhere near where it used to be? Is that like 
I get these Michigan cities mixed up, honestly. There's one of these Michigan cities where the org is no longer located in in the city that the org is named after. And I can never remember which one it is. Nora, did you freeze or are you just making a face? I'm making a face. <laughs> <laughs> I could. <laughs> I thought you were frozen. Just like this. <laughs> no, I didn't freeze. I was um, just making that face. The only street be. that Scientology did I'm ever aware of. L. Ron Hubbard Way. Yeah, North Boren <sighs> North Boriendo. Was it Borendo or Boriendo? Borendo. Borendo. North. North Borendo Street became L. Ron Hubbard Way. In and Hollywood. every year, people go to the city Ridiculous. council, try to get it changed back. Oh, really? Good and Scientology them. shuts them down because the wow. city of L.A. people are like, we cannot stand it. Yes. Because there's wow. people that live there that are not Scientologists that like, can you imagine doing DoorDash? Wow. And you have to type in L. Ron Hubbard Way Fuck on your that. fucking DoorDash. Like, or on your oh Amazon Prime. Like, what's your address? Uh, Ron uh, like, bleh. like, nobody wants to come see you, your <clears throat> Uber driver. Where are we going? Wow. Ew. Oh, like, oh, my so God. Funny. Am I going to get accosted? Will I make it off the street? Like, you probably oh can't get God. picked up. <laughs> I would imagine you wouldn't like it either. Oh, I know. Events That's on there. So Oh, yeah, if you live on L. Ron Hubbard Way, right? Anyone who ever asks for an Uber, the Uber driver is like, uh, is this someone? I used to live on L. Ron Hubbard Way, but I was a Scientologist. Yeah. But Nora, I didn't. You're right. There were non Scientologists. Imagine being one of those freaks that had to live there. I mean, I would. Or the do Kaiser to that's move. there. The Kaiser yeah. that's there, right? The yeah. Kaiser has to be like, come see us that's at L. Ron sure. Hubbard Way. Like, it'd be oh, like, no. I'm sure that's right. That huge. They probably I'm use sure Sunset. That. They probably use Sunset. I'm sure they do because they are on Sunset, right? And then Elrond yeah, they're across the street of Sunset. But yeah. the door, the well, door is on is is technically on Elrond Hubbard Way. So I, I'm How sure they use be, Sunset. Though. It's it's on the other no, side of the street. The street. No, there's what sunset. there's a small clinic there. I had I had a, a, a minor. It's a, it's an outpatient surgery building there because I had a, a minor surgery done at that building after I left the Sea Org. And I remember there was like an event going on and I'm walking out with like a bandage on my head. And I was thinking like, there's going to be like 20 people that are going to see me with like my head taped up. Like I'm from world war two, you know, and they're going to be like, Oh, there goes the PTS. Like <laughs> that was on L. Ron Hubbard way, Nora, what you're talking yeah, about. That's like out of the little right? Kaiser. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right, Lisa Marchbanks, Dragonfish, Handmade Goods. Since there's a caste system in Scientology, do you think David Miscavige believes his BTs are more important than everyone else's? <laughs> oh, and Nora, 100% is definitely a Scientology thing. I don't, I don't get uh, it. Inside joke. I don't get no. it. Would you care to explain yourself, Nora? Do you get the joke? What, the hundred? No, we had a whole thing the last time that I'm trying to stop saying a hundred percent because oh. somebody pointed out last oh. time that a hundred percent saying a hundred percent, no one else says that outside of Scientology. That is not a Scientology thing. Yeah, I don't think so because my wife said no, it's not. Yeah, no. maybe it it's leaked out of Scientology media. into the. It is one, it is one hundred percent not a Scientology thing. I True. said though during my my son's graduation though somebody was giving speeches. They just let children make speeches and they did not. And I said the words. If these speeches were awful. They just let randos make speeches. And I was like, nobody qual check these speeches. And she's like, that's a Scientology thing. And I'm like, well, still, it's a valid point. Like they needed, <laughs> they needed a qual check. And she's like, I'm like, it's a good word in this instance. I'm gonna have to. I'm, that I'm is with funny. It. That's but funny. Yeah. She will just like say that to me. She goes, "That's a Scientology word." Like, <laughs> it would be funny if Miscavige thought his BTS were somehow uh, easier to clear than everyone else's BTS because he had. I don't BTs think he thinks he has else. them. <laughs> I know, but Nora, I think they have a BT grounding unit at Gold. Do they not? I mean, isn't? Oh, they, I don't know. I was never at Gold. I was barred from there. Me neither. I'm sure. I never. They had me. You had to get approved or whatever to go out there to do your little gold films or whatever. So I never made it out there. But I remember hearing that D yeah. that DM does absolutely believe in BTS despite changing the tech and other every other area. And that if he, if people are getting too restimulated at gold or whatever, they have a BT grounding unit that you can hold on. Wow. And get rid of your freaking BTS. I'm sure that's. You just, I like, mean, hang on to a pole. Yeah. It's just like metal rods. Like it's like rods just you know grounded into the earth. 
Yeah, it's just these rods. That, if I recall correctly, I think it was Mark Headley who told the story. So uh, ridiculous. He had these copper rods grounded into the earth, and you'd hold them to destimulate or some shit. That's wow. so. Never heard that is that before. is that true? <laughs> Anybody could so. just go ground themselves. I, that's what that's how the story goes. Did you have to like CSW to go rods? That's a great question. <laughs> is it a bridge step? Actually, a Jeff Hawkins. Action. Jeff Hawkins, if you're still in the chat. Um, let us know. Oh my God. I have to know about these rods. What was the real deal about the, the BT grounding rods? Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) This is amazing. I love it. (laughs) Um, okay. This is half Nelson. How can anyone be a Scientologist in those? How can anyone be a Scientologist in their, those in their prior life? life? If Scientology hasn't been around that long in the grand scheme of things, it's been around since the fifties. So I'm only 47. Yeah, and you can go so, clear on Dianetics in 1950, right? So, so I, I, I was born in 1976, so I absolutely could have been a Scientologist too. in my prior life. I um, was Nora. I attested to past life clear. I was so a did Dianeticist I. in the past life. High five. Are, are we all, Aaron? That's the secret right. to getting up the bridge. By the way, you could have just right. you know originated. Aaron, that. stop denying your true self and just come out of your Scientology <laughs> shell. We're all we come. I mean, the the motto of the sea, the the motto of the sea org is revenemus, which means we come back. That's that's what it means. So he put it in the in the little you know the laurel leaf there, revenemus, and so he he imprinted all of us baby Scientologists with the fact that we came back um, from birth, and then you know like we were all told, and you know it was uh, told to us as children that we purposely chose these two morons as our parents. Uh, we yeah. hovered around the hospital right. just like is in our disembodied state, just seeking out Scientologists. Like, where are you, Scientologists? Let me find you here in this hospital, in this oh smoke-filled hospital God. of the 70s. Clear the smoke. Where are you? Where are you, Scientology baby body? Let me swim to you. And oh there God, you are. I'm going to so take true. Undimo, Shindia, I've oh. grabbed this little baby body. It's mine. And now I picked it. Um, I can't believe I believed in it when you put it that way, Nora. Holy shit. That's, that's exactly that's, the, meta- that's metaphysics the story I grew we up believed. In. Absolutely. And um, we stuck shit, with it. Man. It's that's, so yeah. it's so dumb. What the yeah. hell? Oh, my God. Indeed. So All right. Yeah. Here's one for Adam. Dan Mosqueda wants to know, do you think Scientology should be barred from a national security clearance of any type? Thinking about the requirement to get audited. Wait, thinking about the requirement to get auditing as a problem for U.S. investigators. Um, do I think they should be barred? I mean, probably knowing how, uh, ethics checks go. (laughs) Um, it didn't bar me. Uh, personally, I had a a secret clearance when I was in to be a gunner's mate. And, uh, but that was before or after you joined Scientology? No, it was after. I mean, I, I got involved in 2005 and joined in the, the military in 2007. And, uh, I even had put down uh, Scientology as my religion on like the, the form that you have to do to get your dog tags. Cause they put your religion on there. Uh, and actually for me, they didn't put Scientology. They put other or something like that. Uh, but so it's not like the military didn't know that I, so the military doesn't recognize Scientology as a religion. Yeah. They just put me as other, even though I wrote in. I love that. Yeah. It's nah. interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, but yeah, they probably should with, with the ethics checks. I mean, if you know certain information and you're in an ethics check and you know, you're feeling obliged to have to, to tell these government secrets, that's kind of not good. Well, from what I recall, from what I recall, the, this is one of the reasons why people with, um, uh, special security clearances are considered illegal PCs and not allowed to get auditing because you're not allowed to wind up in a situation in an auditing session where you're not allowed to answer the auditor's question. Mm-hmm. And you're also not allowed to hide behind something like a security clearance in order to not answer the auditor's question. This is sort of one of the uh, unsolvable situations for which a right. solution was being demanded is how, you know, how, how can someone engage in auditing who's not allowed to answer all the questions? For, and, for me, I was already out of the military. Cause I still had my secret clearance when I got out. They last for 10 years. So it always came up, every A to J that I had. But it was always dismissed as being fine because I was out of the military. It was like, oh, I have a secret clearance, but it's not like I'm using it anymore. So 
I was always cleared to go ahead, even though I had the clearance, but because I wasn't using it and not like I really knew anything. That's so here's a perfect advice. example. Let's say someone um, has top secret clearance, they're special forces, they're on some top secret mission and they get um, an, as, as an engram, right? They, they get a concussion and then they're in a Dianetics auditing session and they're having, they're being asked by the auditor to give every single detail of everything that happened during that incident and they can't do that without violating their security clearance. That's an impossible situation. Yep. Now, that's more of a threat to Scientology than it is to the military. But right. it creates an interesting situation, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And Aaron, remember I, he was always being <laughs> infiltrated back in the day by government officials, you know, and he was super paranoid. And that's why the sec checks were, are you a government official? Have you, you know, because people were trying to get the scoop on Scientology, too, and going in there undercover. Yeah, yeah because the the military doesn't care if you're a Scientologist. They're not afraid of you being a Scientologist because no. they know they're right. not a threat. However, Scientology is 100% of you being a military person and having those high special clearances because they know you would be specially trained to infiltrate them and they would not be able to find you out. That's the real problem because the military would be like, oh, you're a Scientology spy. We're going to like, we have so many techniques, honey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we we are going to dismantle you in about 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> like we got no problems. We have places everywhere around the world we could take you and we'll figure it out. Okay. Like you've seen the movies. We got this. Um, yeah. No problem. <laughs> we, yeah. we have no problems figuring out who you are. Uh, but like Scientology is like, oh, hot dog. These guys are for realsies. And we have, and they've had people, you know. I mean, like fully come in. I mean, Aaron, you you and I have never talked about what happened the day after we graduated flag and the guy who left us the note in, the, in the boys door room. Do you remember that? Gus, Gus Jones? Yes. Do you remember Gus that? Gus Jones from Salt Lake City. Yeah. He had yes. been a spy the whole time. There was an, really? there was an actual, we're going to do this super quick because we have to do an entire live about it. But the day we graduated the gold, the original golden age of tech, we're just going to drop this bomb and leave it. But. The day we graduated, the original Golden Age of Tech, a guy who did the entire training with us, who had been there, left a note in the boys' dorm. It, it was like a, this most heartfelt note that just simply said, I'm so sorry. I'm a fraud. I'm, I, I'm an FBI agent. I was sent in to infiltrate. And it, it turns out you guys are really a good group of guys. And I'm so, so sorry. I am not who I said I was. My, my real name is X. I can't remember what his real name was. But I was sent here as an undercover FBI agent to infiltrate. And I, I'm, I'm, I cannot go back, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And just drop this bomb that he was not actually who wow. he said he was. He was an undercover FBI agent. He had joined staff for like over a year and had been working undercover at the Salt Lake City Org went to flag, did the training, went through the whole training with us, and then just ran away the night after we graduated. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. It was insanity. Holy and then other shit. things happened after. We, one day, Aaron, you and I have to do a whole live about it. It was insane. So they, yes, government agents have, in fact, absolutely infiltrated successfully Scientology meant more but than once. And it's weird. I mean, that would have been an unsuccessful, like successful infiltration with finding essentially nothing. Right. I mean, I mean, he found out that there was like a good group of international people that gathered together to get trained. Right. If he had stayed, then he would have seen the unraveling of a lot of things. He should have stayed. But I think he just made friends with like really cool people like us and a couple other people. And it just like it made him too well, yeah, sad. He was, he was to, just like, in farmers. He was just in farmers. Yeah. Roommate. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Julie Bluestein. Uh, any way that Tom Cruise ever leaves or is he a lost cause? A great what do you guys question. think? Does he ever leave? I doubt he'll ever leave. I don't see it. I have to say no, but man, I was just talking about this with my buddy Marcus the other night. I want him to leave. And if you go back to an interview that he did before Scientology came into his life, it's hard to find. It's rare. But he does seem like an empathic person who was trying to take care of his family. He was super vulnerable in the interview. He's just totally different than the Tom Cruise we know today. So he might not be a sociopath. They make secondary sociopaths, right, Aaron, as you know, right? So if he's not and he can break that Truman Show bubble and something bad enough happens in his life, especially with the way things are going, I never thought he was going to leave. But now I'm like, 
there's a possibility their tax exempt status might get taken away. Tom Cruise might actually leave someday too. And if he does, he can take the whole house of cards down with him. But he yeah. might be a psychopath. I don't freaking know, but I hope he does, man, because there's two things on that. One, he's not going to be able to, can you imagine decompressing and coming to terms with what he did to Nicole and his kids and all that? I mean, that might be, a, he might be in too deep like my dad was where he can't accept that because the trauma would be too much. His head would fucking explode. There's too much damage to make up. But if he can, and he's not a psychopath and he can get out of it, I hope he does, man. Cause let's just say everyone would freaking win with that. Yeah. I'll say he was, he was, he did show up in person um, for the New Year's Eve event that was being done live by David Miscavige at the Fort Harrison Hotel. So um, he's not distancing himself. I mean, that what that's six that's months ago now, but still, um, <clears throat> he was there in person. So that sucks. Uh, yeah. All right, Kat, ACDC fan, says the tide seems to be turning, and not just with Danny Masterson and David Miscavige. Um, on a much larger scale, if you get my drift, uh, two that are short and one with small hands. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, I get it. Yeah, okay. We're not getting political though. All right. Yeah. Jolene Harris. <laughs> Been trying to boycott anything that would put money in the pockets of Scientology for years. Thoughts? Is there a list somewhere it is hard to keep up with? What do you guys think about this? Well, stay away from Narconon and way to happiness. We could leave a list of all their front groups that people can know. CCHR, there's a million of them. which is Citizens Commission go. for Human Rights. It's a good um, idea, they have actually. a lot of front groups, but they also, I mean, if you're like trying to get really into the nitty gritty, like businesses owned by Scientologists, yeah. that's a lot of businesses like that's ABC true. Mouse um, for parents right. out there. Sure. Um, the H2O water, what was that thing? Right. That was a whole, I mean, there's so many businesses that are owned by Scientologists and stuff. And then you can go into other, what? The biggest one I found out about this week is okay. there is a YouTube channel called Knees Over Toes. Yeah, it's a fit right. He's a huge Scientologist. I know. What is, who, what is this? I know. Who Knees Over Toes. Knees Over Toes. He, they own the gym here in Clearwater called ATG, They're which stands big. for At The Gym. He's a, he's a big his name's Brett, um, yeah, Brett something. Hold quite on. popular, too. Is it Brett Grace? Hold on. Let me pull it up here. Um, Brian Patrick. Brian Patrick, his wife is Alyssa Patrick. He's been on Joe Rogan several times. Mm -hmm. um, the guy makes, oh, wow. guy. The guy makes 3 to $5 million a month in his online business. Wow. And he personally donates $70,000 a month to Scientology. That sucks. And Minimum, I, right? <clears throat> Um, well, that's just what he says he donates, you know, and uh, but never talks about Scientology. He's one of these guys who's under the radar, like Ethan Soup. Right. Ethan Soup, please, kind of acting like he's out of Scientology. He's totally, he's totally, he's totally not. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So these guys, look him up. Brian Patrick, knees over toes. They sell online fitness. They've got an online fitness resource business. Um, millions. It's like, um, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a lot of money. It's just, and that would be great to create a website, you know, for someone to put together with all the front groups, not just the science CCHR and stuff. But we, it would be really nice to know all these businesses so people can avoid them. That's yeah. a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, if someone else wants to do that, <clears throat> that's cool. I know I'm not going to do it. That's all. I don't have the time either. But that's a great idea. <laughs> There's already that site with members' names on there too. Any course completions? Yeah, maybe the same people that's true. That could, and and by the way, he's a second know. gen member. He's born and raised. He's not. Oh, he's not I didn't a first know that. Gen member. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, that is wow. Brian Patrick, knees over toes. And uh, yeah, I saw him on Rogan. Had no idea he was a Scientologist. Um, okay, Brandy says, can we get Nora bobbleheads, please? Great Prefer suggestion. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Preferably rocking a rainbow pride hat, making the peace sign and SP TV shirt. Well, Nora's just got to get a merch store going through fourth, uh, fourth I wall. I know. <laughs> we need a Nora bobblehead. That's perfect. <laughs> Although I guess you can't, pro you probably can't do a bobblehead through fourth wall, um, and uh, I'm not no. into bobbleheads. Yeah, bobbleheads are a pain in the butt. It's hard. Actually, I actually I take that back. There's many vendors out there that will do bobbleheads. It's I'll not, figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> please do. <laughs> um, okay, Gary Jackson Moorhead is in the chat. Um, hello, Gar hello Jackson. My educated guess is there are three certain facts of life. Taxes, death, and Dave only tells Tom what Dave wants Tom to know <laughs> during their during their ride to Keebler headquarters on the Keebler short bus while they wax each other's ski poles. Wow. Yeah. There goes the monetization, Aaron. 
<laughs> no, he said it. Now, see, Doug Jackson did it poetically. True, true. But the algorithm Jackson. sniffs all the shit out. Of He's waxing poetic. I as got Elon it. Would say <laughs> exactly waxing, <laughs> waxing enthusiastic. poetic about waxing them poles. Hey oh, oh my god, that's funny. Okay, Rosemary, do you think that the church has a blackmail file on Tom Cruise? And if so, would they use it in the case Tom threatens to leave the church? What do you guys think? Of course they would Probably. have a blackmail file on. Every member they have a blackmail file on. All my yeah. shit was pulled out when yeah, I left. So he's no different. Yeah. Ethics folder. That's exactly. There you go. That's, yeah. that's, it's an, it's, it's, I look at it like an intelligence gathering agency. Everything mm -hmm. that you tell them is going to be used against you. That's their blackmail file, even if yeah. you're a newbie Scientologist. Yeah, but it's. I think it's also worth s noting that when someone is um, threatening is the wrong word, right? Because nobody threatens to leave good Scientology. Point. It's a good you just, point. You just start drift. They they get the sense that you're you're drifting away. They when suggest. They, come, they make yeah. suggestions of threats. Well, yeah. when they come to try to get you back, they they tend to play the think about your eternity card. They tend right. to they tend to pull on the heartstrings. I can't think of an example where someone's been like, if you leave, we're going to expose X, Y, and Z. I mean, have you guys ever experienced that? No, only no. if you cross that line and you become a threat and you really do leave, but not, they'll, like you said, Aaron, they'll do anything to keep you in there without threatening you at all until you finally pull the trigger and go, right. fuck you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hockey, books, and storytellers. A, a run. Are you able to tell us ballpark figure how many people the Aftermath Foundation has helped? Doug, where's the chemist? I can't answer for the emist, and um, I don't know where he's at. I'll, I'll have a talk with them for sure. Aaron, please take the next question. Because <laughs> I don't know okay. the answer to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the, the, how I describe this is every single week, the Aftermath Foundation is helping someone who is at some point in the process of leaving Scientology. Um, I think when some people ask this question, they're probably thinking in terms of money, because we've said the foundation will help people get established, you know, get a place to live, get transportation, help them get jobs and everything, help them get uh, flights uh, to get out of wherever they need to get out of, to get to wherever they need to get to. But that's not the only way the foundation helps people. So I can tell you this, every single week, the foundation is helping in some way, shape or form someone who's leaving. That's Scientology. incredible, by the way. I had no yeah. idea that there's that many people leaving. That's, that's a good stat, man. If you have to help one person out a week, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for doing that, dude. Because I been very, that must be hard to, to run. And it's been very that. successful. It's been That's very fantastic. successful. Um, our humble bug. Well, thank you for the super chat, humble bug. Uh, what's this? Ola, Ola Strazalaska. I don't know. I give up. Thank you for the super sticker. Ken's channel. I'm one and a half hours through Adam's Adam interview. Bobblehead. Nice. Now we're thinking, Ken. Do we get an Adam Bobblehead if we watch all three and a half hours? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like it. We, we need to find a bobblehead vendor that isn't so difficult to get things done through because it would be fun. It would be nice. It'd be fun to have a whole collection of SPTV yeah. bobbleheads. That would be funny. <laughs> Wouldn't it? That'd be great. Yeah. You can line them um, up against your wall back there, Aaron, underneath <laughs> Marion uh, stuff. Too. What are they? There's those dolls, those big fun, are they called Funko Pop dolls or something that have the big heads, the funny little dolls? Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, if it was easy to like get those made, it would be so much fun. Alex, um, Alex can probably take care of that. I'll, I'll talk to him about stuff like that. Nice. Angel Boostar, are there any orgs in Scotland? I hope not. There are orgs in Scotland. Yes. Uh, there's one in Edinburgh, right? For sure there are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. At least Edinburgh. Um, wait, wait, is that is that right? Hold on. Scientology or... Don't they have one almost I'm sure there is one in there. Scotland. I'm just not sure if it's an org or if it's a mission or if it's one of these other funny things there was an org remember because we trained with some people from scotland um but i think it might have been downgraded to a mission later on because it was so so small because you that was where i learned mission, yeah well yeah you can you can get well, downgraded. missions are missions are privately owned right orgs but i think yeah they just yeah there was an org there was the edinburgh org because remember that was that was where i learned to to do the the pre-session in the Scottish accent. And that's still my favorite moment where we could not understand that girl at all. And she was like, all right, squeeze the cans. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Hold it for just a moment and let it out through your moat. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm not auditioning yet. And then we were all just like laughing. We couldn't do the drill with her because she's like, all right, look at the top of the page. Is there anything on this page you didn't fully understand? <laughs> we're all like is this mike myers or like what's happening 
<laughs> have you ever like, done stand up, Nora? Holy shit, man. Have you? That, that girl was like so serious. She was so <laughs> earnest. And she was like, I was like, Scottish people are going to be like into it. But I was like, I can't. Like, <laughs> fucking funny, man. Oh, she was That's great. That's awesome. Lady oh. Veritas. Nora. Lady. Uh-oh. Nora re true story time vid. I can't read like, okay, you read this Nora. Okay. Regarding the true story time video and Tom Cruise closing down the project. Is he aware of Dave Miscavige's madness? And is he acting like his minder? Okay. If we have to decipher the comments, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Do you understand? what? Yeah. I mean, well, of course he's, I mean, I think Tom and Dave has slowly merged into one person over time. I mean, they're getting the same Botox treatment. They always <laughs> similarly have the same hairstyle. And we've, we've seen this over the years yeah. where they dress the same. They take on the same, uh, to use the Scientology word, the same valence. Um, DM's got the same motorcycle jacket. They'll get the same bikes he has to have the same kind of like swag and all that kind of stuff so yes they they slowly become the same person so if tom is doing a race car movie then david has to have race cars if he's doing a motorcycle movie then david has to have motorcycles if he's you know growing his hair out for the last samurai then dave is growing his hair out if he's chopping his hair off for minority report then dave is chopping his hair off so i think dave is a teeny tiny bit um infatuated with tom and is emulating the tom cruise-ness um kind of a thing because he's jealous of tom being the biggest movie star you know on the planet um and wants to emulate himself as the biggest um, religious leader on the planet, which of course, as we know, Scientology is this, one of the smallest fringe cults on the planet and ultimately means nothing and nobody cares. So he's trying to make himself more important than he actually is. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Maria de Jesus Gutierrez. It was 2001. St. Mo's is in San Monica, California. That was probably with Tom's kids then. Oh, that wouldn't have been with Keith because she wasn't with Keith then. Interesting. Mm-hmm. 2001. When did Tom and Nicole get divorced? I thought it was I around to... that time, wasn't it? Yeah, huh? I'll check. I'll check. I don't know. I don't keep all these dates in my head. <clears throat> all right, moving on. Um, Kaz Ferns, small contribution for cookies for the SP. TV pups. There you go. Awesome. Uh, Cheryl Limeade. Has Scientology been able to purchase hate websites as fast as SPTV has grown? That's a, that's a good question. I don't tend to look up those things, but like for all the SPTV channels, have they purchased who is, you know, Vanessa LaRose? Uh, who, who is, um, uh, you know, Alex Barnes Ross? Um, who is Doug Kramer? Have you ever checked, Doug? Have they purchased that? I haven't checked, but I think it would come onto my radar or I would make a video about it or someone would have, would have sent it to me, so not yet. And I don't think they're keeping up with any of these people that yeah. have sprung out since you kind of started blowing your channel up. There's been, what, 20 or 30? And there's no sites as far as I know yet. Well, yeah, but even if they don't make the sites, they might just oh, purchase the, name? the domains. That's possible. I haven't checked. I haven't checked that. Yeah. It doesn't true. matter what they say anyways. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. John Sostovsky, do ex-Scientology members have trouble adjusting their sleep after leaving? Personally, I sleep like a baby. I wake up every two to three hours crying. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that before. Going to have to steal that from you, John. That's a good, that's a good joke. I like yeah, that. Definitely. I like that joke. <laughs> I assume that the, the, the struggle is similar to what prisoners have to adjust to when they get out yeah. of prison and have to go back to normal life. Yeah. And just whatever pattern they became accustomed to, I think will probably stick with them. Um, you know, so I don't know. Did Nora, did you feel you personally had any trouble adjusting the sleep? I be, but remember leaving the Sea Org is not the same thing as leaving Scientology True. and being in Scientology is not necessarily associated with having trouble sleeping. Um, um, I, I have a different bag of chips cause I left from the RPF. So yeah. I have a lot more, I have PTSD. So my sleep is terrible and I take special medicine to stave off those nightmares, mm-hmm. um, to make me, uh, be able to sleep. Thank yeah. you. Modern pharmaceuticals and psychiatry. 
Yep. Well, thank you. There you go. <laughs> this broadcast brought to you by uh, Psychiatry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just want to keep yeah. those big pharma checks rolling. Yes, keep, you got to yeah. get keep, that big pharma check. That'll keep uh, the Scientology <laughs> ad probably from popping up on your channel because I've been seeing those constantly whenever you type on a Scientology video. Right. Yeah. I would love to be sponsored by Big Pharma. I would love to be getting those checks that they claim that we get. I, I, right. I'm searching for mine in my mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone's intercepting it. I don't know. My bank rejected the last check. They said, sir, we've never seen a check with that many zeros. We're going to have to look into hey this. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stephanie Sandoval says, do you think David Miscavige visits Shelley? Good question. You don't think I at don't, all? Just I a check on so. I would imagine just... they're like divorced at this point and they're just keeping that on the DL. That's what it, I don't know. That's just my I guess. just hope she's still alive. Yeah. And yeah. They haven't just hidden that. I really, I mean, I honestly, I hope that. I hope she gets out one day and she can just live a life, you know. Yep. Andy yeah. Fabulous, pressing like button, pressing like doesn't do a damn thing for anything, but it makes me feel good, like Hell yeah. smoking some Primo Int-based pot. They call it Golden Era. <laughs> nice. I'll have to get that strain. Thanks for the heads Press, up, Andy. Pressing the like button does do something. It doesn't do nothing. I think I think you're right. I, for, I mean, it does something. I don't know. Who knows? Helps with engagement numbers, yeah. 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 All right, Rural SD Lawyer. Is there a website that lists members and former members of Scientology? What is it? So what yes. there is is a database uh, of any Scientology magazine that has published its co course completions and auditing completions lists. Someone out there has, to some degree or another, compiled those names and the services that they completed into onto a website and if you just punch in someone's name joe blow and type scientology service completions it will bring you to that database and um i always forget the name of it and it's not necessarily complete um but it's better than nothing and it's reasonably complete you know uh so yeah there you go rue says hi nano davy <laughs> all right <laughs> Uh, Lily Castle asks, is Reese still looking for help to write her story? Lily, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, Smoky Willows, do you have to be an ex-Scientologist to be here? Well, Smoky Willows, you're here. <laughs> no. Goalie, get on that. We need to block her. No, of course not. Most, <laughs> most people are not ex-Scientologists. No, Dad, I like it when non ex Harsh. Sorry. Absolutely not. <laughs> hey, Smoky. someone's got to run. Of course uh, not. Okay, let's see. Lulu 92, Sayo Church Road is because of Sayo Township between Ann Arbor and Dexter. Wiki says it may be based off of a Greek word, chios. Well, there you go. And there you go. <laughs> um, OB O'Brien, Nora, if the man was a narcissistic purple vegetable to me, why would I want my children to be subjected to that? Uh-oh, what's well, this referring to? Tom Cruise, that, right? My to comments about Tom Cruise. I understand uh, understood, Obi. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I we could debate back and forth for hours on that. I'm just saying, as a mom with kids, I understand their strategy on that. And as a kid of divorce, um, even with craptastic dads, uh, my dad wasn't the best dad. I'd still, if he were alive, w would want to see him and have conversations and want him to see my kids who are here now who he missed out on. So un understood. Um, it just, um, yeah, when you're, and I don't, and, and I don't know if you're a parent or not or whatever. Um, like I said, with conditions, it, it wouldn't just be like free reign type of situation. Like go see fun dad who happens to be a movie star and like go to his set or something, you know, um, you know, that's a much longer conversation, but yeah, understood. So purple I, I totally vegetable, understand. Purple vegetable probably means eggplant emoji, which means yeah. dick. Yes. There you go. You can I understood. Dick. I understood there, there. what they were saying. Yeah. I didn't. I, didn't. Right I was like purple hippopotamus. <laughs> I was like, what the no, hell? No, okay. I, I got, I got, I got Obi's vibe. All right, King Shane UK. It was a wiki link on a former celebrity Scientologist. Still not enough details. <laughs> oh come on, that's Still plenty, not Aaron. Enough details. Aaron, you'll find it in your inbox later. Yes. Yes. So you'll find I it mean. Later. If someone sends me a link to a Wikipedia page on a former celebrity Scientologist, um, I'll probably just delete it, honestly. 
Like I can't I, I like uh, I mean, just say the name of the person. I mean, I, I don't care what Wikipedia says about anybody just for the record. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it got anyway. changed or something. They're trying to like give you a hint that maybe somebody left. Oh, maybe. that's probably why they sent you the wiki link that maybe something got changed on their wiki. Oh, all right. We'll check it out. I, I'll check the emails. Um, Jolene Harris, I'm a PO, parole officer, that monitors only sex offenders in the community. Would love to see a video about the restriction Danny Masterson will have if he makes it out of prison. Well, Jolene, it sounds like you'd be the best one to do that video because yes. I don't know anything about all that. But he's not making it out of prison. I'm no, afraid. he's not. I hope not. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, SPTV, Zenu, a.k.a. Michelle Carpenter. Thanks to y'all's shout outs last week, the SPTV notifications discord is up from 50 to 90 members. Nice. Sweet. Nice SPTV. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm not a big, dis- I don't understand Discord. <laughs> Me neither. We have a Discord site, Aaron, but I don't understand it. Just let but Alex I, run it. But I will tell you that in the Facebook group called Supporters of Leah Remini, we do have 35,000 yeah. members in there. And we can also, so, like, what is this Discord for? The, this, um, it's for SPTV. Discord- but what is it for? what's it for for like, what do you, what what do, you, you do? do with it? What, what do you do with it? Could well, he have? Gamers use Discord. I use it there all the time. Go. With you know, for, it's just it's chat. It's and chat. You, so it's you know, similar chat to your channels, Facebook yeah. TV. It's similar to your Facebook little group. It's just chat. And uh, yeah, exactly. You can share links, Aaron. It's you can jump over on. We, you can check so it now, out. Hold on, Edgeman came here. Just it, chat as opposed to what? It's mostly used for like voice com communications. You know, you so have you to can see talk it. To your it, teammates. You it know, can be pretty then, cool, but it's a whole other avenue to open up, kind of. But hold on, but Adam, you're talking about gaming. Yeah. You're talking about how you use it for gaming. I'm talking mm-hmm. about how it's used for SPTV. When you say chat, do you mean type chat or voice chat? Both. You can, both, do, you both. can do both. You have mods I, and every. Aaron, check out the check out the one Alexander Barn Ross did. It's our mutual one, just to get a feel for it, and you can decide if you like it or I'm, not. I'm I, guessing they have like some bot that's set up that's gonna like uh, announce when you go live. That They're saying too. like SPTV notifications. It's gonna so announce it they, to ni- It's gonna announce it to 90 people. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> you can set it up. Apparently, Whatever's I don't know there. how to do that, but you. I think you can set it up. Like Aaron, if you had a Discord or you go to this one, you can. If you have your own, I believe you can set it up where your the notifications will go out to all the members of the Discord. But you have. I don't know how to set it up to do that. It's all nine options. options to do it. Yeah. Like well, you guys grow. can see I really can... don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> you but don't... I'm happy to help it continue growing. How do we give it a shout out? Is it just called SPTV Zenu? Is that the name of the Discord server? How do we give it a shout out? Does anyone know what it's called? I don't know, but maybe he could type in the comments right now. I'm sure <laughs> that's probably what it's called. Yes, we're happy to continue to give a shout out to this Discord server, even though none of I us know how to use email it. it. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Email it to you. All right, sweet. Jen W, hi from Australia. Great to see you guys. Always love the viewers from Australia. Annie Kurtz. Okay, I'll try again because I really do have a question. How much does auditing cost? Do you pay by the hour? Do you pay by the bridge level? Thank you. Love you all. So um, auditing has one price at a class at a mission, another price at a class five organization, and then a higher price at a class seven organization, and then a higher price at a class nine organization, and then an even higher price at a class 12 organization. I think the cheapest you can get professional auditing for in Scientology is something like $2,800 for a 12 and a half hour block of auditing. Does that sound about no, right no. to you guys? 12, uh... I, yeah, I think that sounds about right yeah, at the okay, really maybe. low end. It's about yeah. 5000 per intensive, just to give a rough figure, because it keeps going up and up. And you can also do, because Marcus was telling me about this, how he got people into the Melrose mission, is you can give them a couple hundred bucks for some Dianetic auditing to get people sort of introduced to, to sure. auditing, but mostly it's about three to 5,000 or whatever, 6,000. I remember it being 2,500 per intensive at Celebrity Center and a flag was like 5,000, I right. believe, yeah. uh, per uh, intensive, which is 12 and a half hour blocks. So let's say $2,500 divided by 12.5 hours. So that's $200 an hour and you have to pay by the intensive. An intensive is a 12 and a half hour block of auditing. You have to pay, you have to pay per intensive. Um, and yeah, it's pretty freaking expensive. And, and they do have a sliding costs. scale. I don't want to encourage anybody to go pay for this, but they have a sliding <laughs> scale. If you pay 12 intensives, it, this price goes down fairly significantly. Yeah. That's right. Which is what I did. Nice. Nice. 
Hockey Books and Storytellers is back with uh, another one. A.A. Hey, hey, Ron, you said that everyone who appeared on Scientology in the Aftermath got a hate website. Does this include the two gentlemen who were from the Nation of Islam? Guys, I must not have watched most of season three or something. Um, I, I did not see an episode with anyone from the Nation of Islam on it. Was That must have been season three. Anyone they see did, that? I did see it, yeah. Okay. So I, since I might not have seen a bunch of season three, there must be a bunch of people who are on the show that I don't actually know were on the show, so I don't know if they got sites. I haven't seen any hate sites on any NOI members. Have you? I haven't, but it's possible that they did by being on that show. I just haven't looked them up yet. Okay. Highly doubtful since aren't they in like a, you know, a total like, you know, love fest with the Nation of Islam right now? Yes, they are. So they why, must have been. They, they must have. Well, they, they must have been former members. Leaving yeah. or the ones that left. You know. From the oh, I see. Well, then, yeah. Then, then they're no longer members. They're not protected anymore. So. Yep. I would say if they're former NOI talking about it, um, the NOI is who they have to worry about, not Scientology. Good point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's um, actually scarier. <laughs> okay, it is. It yeah. freaking is. Commanda eighty three. I was just in Ireland for two weeks, and the Scientologists were out in force in Dublin with their anti-psych posters. Never seen them in person before because there's no Scientology where I live. They gave me a flyer. Was there some sort of a big psych convention up in Ireland? If there was, I didn't hear about it. Posters and everything. Oh, there must have been some sort of a APA convention or something. Yeah, there you go. Probably. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some regional meeting maybe, perhaps. Yeah, got to shut down the psychs. Amazing. Yeah, nothing brings the Scientologists out to the yard of that's true. Then more than a, than a psych of a psych event. Yeah, that's true. Did Nora get stuck again? No. No, she's just <laughs> got the frozen face. <laughs> uh, you know what's happening? You're seeing my reading face. I'm I'm behind on the comments, so I'm just trying to make sure there's nothing good in there that I'm missing. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I get I get a weird reading face apparently. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson is back. Uh, JB, John go. Rousseau installed the actual ground rod at Dave's no desk. No way, dude. At his desk no in way. Building 50. Are you the kidding I me? It's a freaking desk. Can you imagine David Aaron just doing some paperwork and all of a sudden, God damn it, I need to get some BT grounding rod going shit at the work. <laughs> Is that what you're talking Probably about? Probably so he doesn't here? have to like walk out to the public place so exactly. nobody could see I mean, when he was this. upset because he's never supposed to be, you know, publicly upset unless he's putting someone's ethics in. So if he got yeah. scared, he could just hold it at his little desk. Like, as you're not far off because he, I think he said that he was afraid of other SPs around him because everybody around Dave is an SP. He was afraid of their BTs jumping on him. So that's probably <laughs> no, seriously, that's what I heard. That's why he, just he has the rod there. After they exactly left the room. right. Exactly. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Wow! The, the idea, idea was started at a. Oh, sorry, man. No, go ahead. The idea was started at a meeting in the sign, Cine. Um, co Cine conference room where you had the chief electrician install one six foot copper rod with braided copper wire. Absolute insanity. So there is more than one. So there's one in the wow. Cine conference room and one in his actual desk in his private office. Incredible. Thanks for that, Gary. That's fascinating. That's funny. Now, 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 people asked, is David Miscavige really believe in Scientology? Doesn't something like this tell you he at least believes in the, the there general you go. structure of it? The general, the broad strokes? There you go. I mean, come on now. I think he really believes in it, Aaron. He just feels he's superior. He probably doesn't think he's changing the tech too much in his mind. He's just making a better version. But I still, he grew up in Scientology and Hubbard. So I think he is a true believer on, yeah. on a pretty high level, even though he doesn't do the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jolene Harris, you can get a Scientology cross on a military tombstone. No shit. Hmm. I did not That's know that. Not either. good. Hmm. Well, for the for the three Scientologists who are probably in right. the military, I'm sure that will <laughs> <laughs> come in handy. Um, Rusty says Nora's too loud, especially when she leans in. Don't listen to this she, black. This is for you, Rusty. Gosh, That's you can't you. do anything right, Nora. You can't be too far away or too close. It is weird that when we, um, for the most part, when we're doing this live, know. you really can't hear any audio distinctions. Only sometimes. I don't, I, I don't know. Whatever. I remember Amy I, Amy had a microphone that was going out of control and it was super, super loud. But for the most part, we can't tell the difference. But on the replay, you can very often tell the difference. That's right. Yeah. Um, anyway, I don't think Nora's too loud right now, but I guess we'll see on the replay. Um, SPTV Zenu says, by the way, Doug's Discord is great. The one okay. that I'm plugging is specifically for notifications when y'all uh, go live. Oh, good to know. And SPTV specific discussion. 
maybe Goldie can drop a link if she's around for uh, SPTV's Discord. That would be cool to see on the replay. There we go. All right, Lady Veritas says, can Doug say hello to Irma? You're welcome, Irma. Hey, lady, how are you? And Irma wants to be called by Don, so hello, Don. How are you doing? It's a long story. I'm not going to explain. All right. Um, Andy Fabulous. Aaron, just come to grips with the fact that you're 1,342,567 years of age. Nora is only 1,263,947 years old. But she's got a tight bod, and she knows how to pick a body with hair. Nora takes auditing <laughs> seriously. Couldn't have said it better, Andy. <laughs> but no, we can't talk about our case here, uh, in or out of session. But yeah, uh, it's well said. It's so funny. I, I, I did not pay for that comment. Um, I just, uh, thank you. Uh, wow. I, I, I just want to say Aaron's uh, bod is definitely tighter. And, and more in shape than mine. Not but these days. You. Not these days. I got a good twenty five pounds, maybe maybe uh, twenty pounds. I could too many, lose. too many. Uh, the, too many everything. Too many Jesus. dip sandwiches. Jeez oh, Louise's. <laughs> um, Leah Lay, hey, hey Ron, I sent you an email with a link to a cringy Matt Rife video with Ashton Kutcher, unbelievably tone deaf to say mm. the least. Oh, I did see that. Matt Rife that. Um, is a comedian who's launching a world tour. And the promo video for his world tour um, had Ashton Kutcher in it. And there was a line in there, Ashton Kutcher. Uh, oh, Matt Reif was sort of um, asking Kutcher if he could meet Mila. He was like, I want to hook up with Mila. And he's like, Mila doesn't like problematic F boys. Except the, yeah. and, and a funny thing to say, considering, you know, uh, Danny Masterson. Uh, oh, yeah, she, she doesn't have a thing for problematic. Well, you can say it. Uh, he, he's like, uh, she doesn't really have a thing for problematic fuck boys. And uh, anyway, that was that, wow. that's what that's what she's referring to. Wow. Um, it, it was an interesting video. Do you guys know who Matt Reif is? He's a stand up comic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Leah Lay. Uh, Selena Michelle says, Nora, you're awesome. I love your insight into and compassion for others. Well, thank oh. you. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's Selena and the dog photo. There you go. I was going to say, I wanted to give a shout out to the dog, but I didn't want to interrupt. So one for Nora. One that's for an Doug. adorbs dog. <laughs> So um, hey. Denver Stevo says, just a reminder to swing over to Clearwater Chad or Denver Stevo after this live for the Monday night after show with SPTV's Notorious Never Ends. Nice. It's it. a good show. I've seen. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Denver. I'll be there. I love it. Ron is asking, any thoughts on how the other Masters and siblings careers might be affected by the guilty verdict? Don't Will it affect them? Sorry, will it affect man. the will it affect the future of 70s shows in reruns? Thanks, man. You'd have to think that it it would have some impact on this. Oh yeah, I don't think anybody will hire them from the stigma. I mean, Jordan and Lana's career. Good luck getting jobs now. I could be wrong, but would you want to hire um, somebody when there's all that money and when they're connected to Danny? I don't think so. Yeah, and they were there just every day. You know, mm-hmm. that's right. Um, I'm. I'm more worried about um, uh, how it would affect the reruns and and and, and any um, further syndication deals. Like, could the entire show be torpedoed That's now? I mean, just like the the Cosby syndication deal went kaput, right? Like, I don't think anyone's showing Cosby reruns, and probably not. I wouldn't be surprised if, if the same thing happened to that '70s show. That so. sucked because that was a money maker too, man. If they don't send, keep syndicating it, they just lost a lot of money due to Danny's actions. So much money. Fuck. Shay Anderson, love this group. Love for Mike. I want a Nora Bobble too. Me too. Yeah. We got to get on that. You got to get on that, um, Nora. I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm yes, Googling it now. Man. I will figure out. How, <laughs> I don't know where to get a bobblehead made. Good Lord. Uh, Selena Michelle says, previous comment, I meant to post on Nora's channel. So going again. There we go. <laughs> There you Just go. Passing it out like Oprah today, <laughs> Selena. Thank nice. you. King Cobra 357. Um, I haven't been able to watch the videos about Mike Rinder. Lost my mom back in 2018 to cancer mm-hmm. at the age of 80. Lost a former coworker at the age of 59 to multifocal motor neuropathy related to I'm ALS. Sorry. And a close acquaintance at 55 to heart issue. Well, I'm so sorry to hear about all that, King Jesus. Cobra so much um, i mean i've been i've been getting emails like that just tons and tons and tons of emails like that so um yeah you know that's just why it's important to me that we do everything that we can and yeah. uh support them in any way that we can and um and we'll see 
we shall see, guys. Absolutely. Uh, Corbett Williams, are you aware of any active Scientologist who has held elective office in the United States? You hear about Sonny Bono having been a Scientologist when he was in Congress, but I don't know. Did, like, mm -hmm. was was did those two things literally overlap? Was he actually an active Scientologist while he was in office? I just don't know. I don't, I don't know, know either. either. There's people who get know. minor positions, but not obviously any presidents or anything. We know of Scientologists, they keep running for things, and they That's haven't right. won. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, Andy Fabulous, can you imagine medical marijuana sold in the merch store? <laughs> I don't think you can legally, can you? SPTV could be more lucrative than Scientology, and we could fair game Scientology until they cry, LRH! How am I hearing my echo if we all have headphones in? You're hearing I an echo? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't think you could sell it via YouTube. I think you could sell it on your own website. Some I don't know. I don't know. The, I'm well, in no, because you'd have to have a medical marijuana license or something. We need. This is why we need chemists mm. in the chat. I'll, yeah. I'll talk to them I don't know. It. It's funny, though. Denver Stevo, email your video best wishes cards for Mike. 10 to 30 seconds, landscape mode by June 16th to me, Denver Stevo. Um, cat... Cat Denver Stevo dotted com. At, I I'm, at, I oh, cat. Okay. So, two. Well, uh, look, is the email address Denver Stevo at Denver com or is it me at Denver com? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. All right. Does anybody know? You guys don't know. I you think know. it says to me, and I think he meant to put at Denver Stevo dot com. I could be wrong, but that's, but I think he just, what I'm saying is the mm -hmm. email address me at denverstevo.com or denverstevo at denverstevo.com. I think com. I would there imagine. You go. I think right, so, there yeah. you go. I, I, that just feels right. It just feels right. Okay. Um, Janine Mayo got my team mic mug already. Awesome. Also, why doesn't anyone talk about what happened to Shelly's mom? That's insane because it's already been written about and it was, wasn't murder. So that's why we don't talk about it. Um, she, uh, I, I, these endless conspiracy theories about Scientology having people killed. Do you know how easy it would be for Scientology to just have people killed instead of doing all the crazy, stupid shit that they do to people? It'd be so much easier just yeah. to kill us all, and they and they don't do it. So I'm, <laughs> so why I don't thank spend you. time talking? Thank about you for that, that suggestion, shit. Aaron. Uh, I, no, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like, come on now. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, people, I mean, that's people, true. No, no, no. But, people will go, but did, but did you hear what they did to uh, Paulette Cooper? And you're like, yeah, you know what they did? They didn't do? They didn't kill her. That's yeah. the, what the, You want to talk about what they did to her. What they did to her was terrible, and it would have been easier to kill her, and they didn't kill her. So stop talking about what they harassing people as evidence that they kill people. Like, they don't have people killed. So that's why. Thank you. I, I'm not yelling at you, Janine. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think that they have people's dogs killed, though? Oh, I've yeah. heard that one before. For sure. I've heard, I've heard that as well. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I, that's not beneath them. Let's put it that way. It's yeah. not beneath them. And also, and, and, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that's, okay. that's, a mi that's a mind game. Do you know right. what I mean? Like mind yeah, games yeah. are not beneath them. Right. You know, absolutely not. I definitely think they had someone kill my hedges in front of my yard. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a mind game, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aaron's like, fine, I didn't like them anyway. Like, yeah, <laughs> saves me the <laughs> Ola Strazolowska says, is there any Scientology presence in Switzerland? Thank you for fighting evil. So there's definitely a Scientology presence in Switzerland. Remind me, guys. There's one in Zurich, right? Is there one in Basel? Basel? Is I think so. There's definitely at there least one. It used to be those three for sure. Maybe not Geneva anymore. I don't know. But yes, Basel and, and uh, Zurich. Those are the yeah. two I remember. Yavel, yavel. Okay, um, Elsie, would Tom Cruise ever take over Scientology if David Miscavige died? No. Shelley probably would, right? That's his dream, <laughs> though. I think that's uh, an actual possibility. I don't think he would run it, but he might be in command and then have a very qualified Sea Org member, like a Pat Nanny Broker type thing, take over. But I think, like Nora said, that would be his dream, probably. I mean, I've said it before, be Tom more Cruise able. wanted to join the Sea Org, and he was told no, oh. because they needed him to continue being the biggest movie star on the planet. He wanted to join the Sea Org, I've and they told him no. Story too. Wow, that's incredible. So, like, when, when are we talking? When did Tom want to join the Sea Org? He wanted to join the Sea Org in the nineties. He wanted to. He wanted to join up and like be DM's like right hand man. He, him he and DM stop, running Scientology he, side by side, clearing the he planet. Wa he wanted to stop being a movie star. Yeah. 
I think yeah. I always that took that too. as a sales pitch for for the no hundred percent. Oh, absolutely. He was I ready to it. put on the uniform and do the EPF and go 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 go. He was going to do it, and he just he was told no. He had to go continue being the greatest movie star that's ever been so that and, he could promote Scientology. And look what he's doing. He's hanging on the side of fucking airplanes. Now he's going to go to outer space. I mean, where like, did that, where'd that information come from? Good question. That's from the president's office. Well, I'm saying, so, like, so and saying I heard it was it just CC. Yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, I that's, that's facts. That's, that's facts. They had to talk him off a tree <laughs> because but, but, he was like, he, he saw saying, the Sea Org okay, pitch but, okay, movie. Okay. 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 But yeah. I'm just asking the information came from someone in the president's office. Yeah. I mean, he saw the recruitment video because they were never showing then, it to him because he's not okay, supposed to be recruited. But the but the information is being shared by people for what purpose? To basically be like he's the most dedicated Scientologist on the planet. Like he was so dedicated, he wanted to join the Sea Org, and he was I told no. That. No, but I'm saying, is it be is this what recruiter like recruiters are saying this to people? That's what oh I no, heard it. Th this was shared with us in the Sea Org. I mean, I don't know how Adam heard it. He probably heard it. Is part of? Did you hear that as part of your yeah, recruitment as part or of the part sales of? Pitch I've heard it. And right. I wasn't even in the yeah. Sea Org. Yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. Um, yeah. Christopher Green R says, "Have you guys ever thought that maybe David Miscavige doesn't want to divorce Shelly Miscavige because he may have to disclose earnings and she's entitled to alimony?" No, <laughs> they don't do that shit in the Sea Org. You don't do the whole alimony and disclose earnings things. That's not how divorce works in the Sea Org. I, I also don't think that David Miscavige discloses all that income to the IRS. Yeah, great point. Oh, you don't, don't think, think so? so either? I don't. Why think wouldn't so. he though? Why wouldn't he? Because I think that he probably has an offshore account in the Caribbean somewhere, and yep. he probably discloses fifty dollars a week, like a good little Sea Org member. Let's be honest. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Aaron. Let's be honest. You think he's disclosing? He's did. making six figure income as a as the religious leader of Scientology. I mean, at the time, at the time, it was definitely being disclosed because it was during the IRS period. It was being during the Maybe IRS workout why. period. So instead of reducing Miscavige's income, he actually gave everyone else. There was a, he gave a whole bunch of executives a, a meaningful salary so that it could just oh. be reported, be oh, reported that's news all, to me. all. Oh, like Guillaume and all those guys and stuff in Heber. A whole bunch of int guy, a whole bunch of oh. all the international management executive committee guys, so that it would all be on the up and up, and he'd be justified in getting getting his pay. I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, but no, I'm, I'm saying this would not be why they don't get a divorce because the Sea Org, there's no alimony in the Sea Org. That doesn't, that doesn't even come up. Um, okay, Elizabeth Marino. Sorry, I meant that. Sorry, I meant that you guys believe David Miscavige when he claims Tom Cruise wanted to join the Sea Org, and know, and knows that. Oh, and and when Dave claims that Tom knows David Miscavige is abusive. To me, it sounds like manipulative BS. I mean, I'm open to the possibility that Dave just wants people to know that Tom knows all this shit. But but Mike and Mark and Claire and all the others do. They believe that Tom really does know this stuff. Now, is that because Dave just says that? I don't know. We'd have to revisit that and ask that question. But what do you guys think? Is that, could this just be a way that of, of Miscavige being manipulative and being like, yeah, Tom's got my back. Tom knows about everything or what? Nora, what do you think? Mm. I think he knows all the things. That's just me personally. I don't think yeah. there's any secrets from him. They're besties. I think they get I, together and have a little sleepover, like well. little bunk beds and tell each other secrets like, like yeah. Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake at the camp oh thing. God. That's exactly That's how I, I see him. They're one and the same. What do you think, Adam? I mean, you were in the Sea Org at CC. You know. They, I, you know. Well, I don't know. I, I would imagine this is such a tough one. To go. I mean, well, Aaron was saying earlier, you'd have to be a psychopath, really. You know what I mean? Like, I would imagine maybe he knows some stuff, but just doesn't know the whole truth. Or maybe David Miscavige being his best buddy is just, you know, justifying some of these things or giving a different perspective that makes it look different or something. I don't know. There's I think he's so definitely manipulating him. Oh, sorry. Man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I guess I don't understand the question that he's just making up that Tom wanted to join the SO as part of this question. I don't think that would be any big deal. I wanted to freaking join the SO. I just couldn't get up my acting career and I could totally see Tom. They, before I made it in Hollywood, every other day they were hitting me up to join the Sea Org. Like kid, you're getting old. You're never going to make it fucking just fucking sign. And that was the only thing that kept me from signing because I wanted to be in the Sea Org too. I looked up to him and I felt like a piece of shit just being a public, selfishly pursuing my dreams. 
So Tom Cruise is gung-ho. He wanted to be a freaking preacher when he was a kid. I'm sure he That's wanted true. to join the Sea yeah. Org. I, I don't know why there would be any controversy over that at all. I totally believe that that's the case. And Nora said it was he... in the 90s, right? You know, hmm. before, kind of when his movie star was, was kicking off his career, Nora, right? So, yeah, I'm sure he was. Pro- of course. So, at 90, nine, early 90s was, was already, what, Days of Thunder? Yeah. Probably about then, yeah. Yeah. And you, you could give up a career to join the Sea Org. I'm thinking of that one gal who got me out to the freaking free winds on this bullshit thing. Um, she was going to be a big movie star. Someone yeah, but Ari, I mean, at that point, Tom was an enormous movie star. He wasn't mm-hmm. just like a minor movie star. Wasn't it like, the ni- I mean? like 1990 when Top Gun came out, right? Yeah, he was Something kicking like massive ass, and he probably wanted yeah, to join, I mean, yeah. join the Sea Org to kick even more ass, because that's the real purpose, not being a movie star. Right. Up, they play Top on that, was, too. Top Gun was 1986. Okay. Yeah, that was, yeah, I so was it, 10 when that movie came out, yeah. Yeah. All right, um, let's say this is M... B. Oh, thank you. Merkwood? Sounds right. M.B. Merkwood. Very, very cute dog. Good Monday evening all. Just picking my dog for Doug. Keep up the good work. You guys rock. <laughs> nice. Thank Gary you. Gary Meek. Nora, please say, all right, squeeze the cans again. <laughs> In Scottish. All right, squeeze the cans. <laughs> Stop. That's fucking great, man. <laughs> Angel Boostar. That's a fantastic Scottish accent. <laughs> Holy shit. I could listen to you say that all day, Nora. That's hilarious. One more time. All right. Take a deep breath. Hold it for just a moment and let it out for your mouth. <laughs> Fantastic. I couldn't sit there. I was dying. Oh, I wouldn't that sit there. The... That's too funny. She Holy was great. So I, I don't felt remember bad. a Scottish person. Did I just you remember, remember this really... her? She had like this little bush of red curly hair. She was amazing. She was great. And then we all just were sitting there laughing and like we just were all FNing the whole time. Like it was ridiculous. And she couldn't get any M4s done. And she was like, Yeah, guys, I'm trying to do an M4 here. I can't get any reads. This is just crazy. I'm trying to do the drill. Come on now. I got to get a read here to get a pass from these guys. They're trying to watch me get a read and y'all oh are FNing. God. And it was like she was pissed. Been... She was just Holy like. That's so funny, man. Because we were just laughing and we couldn't take it. It was amazing. Yeah, I just remember the really small lady from Wales and I remember the Welsh, the Welsh oh, accent. Oh man, that Welsh funny. accent too. I didn't know they spoke uh, uh, their own language in that tiny little country and I was like, right? oh my God, what is that? I was like, are they, what is, what are they saying? I can't understand them. I was like, they're speaking another language? Anyway, yeah. I love, I love the Welsh accent. Yeah. Um, all right. So what do we have here? Denver, Steve-O. Join us on June 26th, immediately following this live stream, but on June 26th, for a very special 10-hour chat-a-thon. Up all night for the love of Mike with the SPTV Never Ends and a night full of special guests. How about that? Wild. Super wild. All right, Kitty and Lou, we need a nor Aaron moron. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> We need a Nor Aaron moron would be a rant video with you two funny ranting about dumb Scientology stuff that makes you go. Hmm. That would be very funny. All right. A no- Noron. That's Aaron Noron. and Nora mixed oh, together. Like a Noron. Noron. A Noron. Like Nora, like, a Noron. Oh, I get it. That's actually pretty funny. I got it. He didn't mean um, you're a moron. He was just putting uh, together. Summer Moon. A lot of people use Discord. I use it for work. If you don't use it, it's just a chat. But thousands of people who are not on YouTube will get notifications and discuss Scientology BS or know about SPTV through it. No, I know it's huge. I've just never been able to figure it out. Like someone put me into a Discord server yeah. uh, and I was like, I, I've never felt so stupid in my life. I was like, I have no idea what's happening. You I don't know how to interact. You can get the hang of it if you spend a little bit. I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, okay, Courtney Thavet. When are we going to get a new rendition of Brisbane's famous song, Oh, a Candy for My Love? <laughs> I've asked her to do a new one, and she won't do it. <laughs> so probably not soon. Um, Denise Locker. Uh, Tom Cruise is not the richest actor in the world. Stop giving him so much credit. He's third behind Tyler Perry and Dwayne Johnson. I don't think he's the richest. I think he's just one of the most popular in the world. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's no, true. No, for sure. Definitely not the richest. Joshua Cox. Adam, I'm an I'm active duty Navy. What was your rate? I'm a GM too. That's like I was also a GM. I was a gunner's mate. What was your rate? 
That's GM. Yeah, is my rate. The, so says, in the Navy, we call it like so. Like Army has like MOS. Navy calls it your rate, like what your job is. So my job was gunner's mate or GM. So he's a GM too. It means he's a second class gunner's mate. But what were you? GM a gunner's mate as well. We also were you, were you a two or were you? Oh, three gunner's or? mate, third class. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, is that the higher or lower? It's lower. Third, okay. second, oh. and then first, and then you get up in the chief. I got you. It goes yeah. three, two, one. All right, cool. Um, Jolene Harris, need a plush of the first SP dog for the pet lovers. Oh, we do need a plush, yeah. a Goliath plush. That would be amazing. I'll see what I can do. I haven't I haven't seen that on the fourth wall platform, but um, I'll try to figure it out. Aaron, we haven't uh, seen Goliath for a while either. How's he doing, man? He's still... He, He's doing great. He's just, I don't record in my house anymore, so he's not, oh, he's not over here. Understood. Um, Joe Virus, we need an SPTV versus Scientology action figure set. Of course, the DM and David Miscavige and Tom Cruise figures would have to be, uh, would have to be life-size to be noticeable. Oh, yes, yes, I get it. I get it. That would be really funny. Andy Fabulous, can't have a Nora bobblehead. She always has her hand on her chin. Maybe something just as pronounced could bobble. Shelly's frozen in a 50-gallon barrel. Wow, this comment's all over the place. <laughs> Andy, no soup for you. That's what I have to say. Uh, Silver <laughs> Dragon, as long as Scientology doesn't leave a horse head in your bed. Good point. That's from uh, the that, Godfather. There you go. Yeah. Um, an offer he can't refuse. Jennifer L. Tom Cruise is probably jealous of Little Davy that he can't beat people up in real life and get away with it. That's a, uh, that's a possibility. I mean, Will he beats up people on screen for money, so he does get away with it. That is better. Uh, that is better. Uh, it's not real life. <laughs> it's true. But is it? Have you ever been stage slapped? That shit hurts. I have. <laughs> I've actually been the on not the recipient in so much as accidentally getting too into the scene and m making my scene partners fear for me. Yeah, I've, That's I've, I've been on time. the recipient end. That shit's bullshit. There's nothing stagey about it. That's true. Yeah, it's BS. That shit hurts. But you know he wants to fucking beat people in real life, but he probably is jealous because Miss. I mean, you know, he's he's run, he's done his Tom Cruise run, and like you know, yep. gone and saved people from burning shit, and you know, so who's to say he hasn't you know tried to karate chop somebody, and we don't know about it. And in his mind, it is real life. Less so money. In, in, yeah, I don't in know. his head, he really is kicking ass and saving. Now he's getting old. He's breaking stuff. And, you know, he's he's fragile. It's not going to so. stop him from doing Top Gun 8 or you know, oh, Mission God, Impossible please, 8. Oh, God, please. Can we There's not? Still, can we just not? I don't want to see it. But Tom did with the last one when he was 50-something. He broke his freaking ankle. Maybe that's the space that one. I don't know. We just <laughs> Oh, right. Not. That is. Shit. Jesus. It never ends. All right. Chow Yun Smut says, when I met Tom... It was 1996, and he was an entitled douche rocket even then. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a tiny douche rocket. Let's be let's be clear. He's yeah. not very tall. Kenny, the editor. In Leah's book, she said she was on a plane going home from the Cruise Holmes wedding. And Leah asked, how was their mom? And one of the kids wow. said, mom is a freaking SP. Yeah. So you, I would, I would, here's what I wonder. What in the in the kids' minds, what were they told Nicole did that made her an SP? Like, did they really tell the kids, your mom tried to get your dad out of Scientology? That's possible that they could have been told something like that, right? Because otherwise, what has she done? I, I can just, just tell you that she see, as soon as up. as soon as Nicole was being written out of the story, we were told to never mention her name. Wow. We were told wow. to wow. not talk about her she did not exist wow. like literally wow. and then when working I worked with those two twice and I was specifically like told to listen if they were talking about their mom you know wow. and find out what they were thinking about their mom and like report on that Wow. Or mm. not to tell them cool. anything specifically about their mom but to just to like listen if they were talking about that while we were in our word clearing session Wow, that's you know. crazy. Mm -hmm. But like that's, you know, don't talk about it. Okay. Fat Cats Heaven says, Nora, can you please say, um, give it her all she's gold, Captain. We're already <laughs> Pretty good, man. Aaron. <laughs> Shit, man. You guys could do good action. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. We're already at Warp 8. <laughs> Mark, 
<laughs> there you go. That is oh fucking God, funny, you man. Guys. Spot on. King Shane UK, is Travolta irrelevant now in Scientology's grand plan? Not irrelevant. No. You don't think so? He's relevant. No. No, absolutely not. He's there, isn't he? <laughs> no, he's not doing anything. He's just know, he? he's John Travolta. Nobody cares. He is not doing any movies. He's not doing anything. He's just going to continue to say nice things because he's a nice guy. He's John Travolta. Nobody cares about him in the grand scheme of movies. He's going to keep doing another Saturday Night Fever revival and keep wearing weird wigs in his movies and keep getting accused of being gay constantly because he is. And it's just like he's going to go live his sad life now that his wife is dead and hopefully maybe come out of the closet one day. He's just a nice guy who keeps covering up crimes of a cult that he's involved in. And hopefully one day he wakes up. Well said. I don't know. Indeed. That's it. Denver Stevo is back with more regarding Mike Rinder best wishes videos. The email is me at it's challenging to sneak the email address through the super chat sensors. Okay. I mean, okay. So it is me. So M E at Denver huh, Pretty simple. There you go. Ariel cereal. Goliath plus <laughs> take my money. <laughs> yeah. And Gigi says, you guys are so much fun to watch. Thank you so much. Did LRH come to with Scientology after having laughing gas? Did LRH That's a funny come question. No, LSD. Come up with Scientology. No, he had a dental extraction and he probably had laughing gas. And this is when the smorgasbord of knowledge was downloaded from the Akashic Records and he suddenly decided to become a cult guru. That's, that's what he says happened. Um, so she probably wants to know. Did he come up with it during the laughing gas, the dental extraction incident? Is so, that what Doug, I've heard, I've heard this story as well, and I cannot recall where the story was told because it's certainly not in Dianetics, right? I believe it's part of his official biography, and if not, it's in plenty of books, like probably John Atak's book and Russell Miller's and such. This is common knowledge that he either talked about this or this may or may not have happened. But It might be in the lore. Phoenix lectures. Does he talk about it, Nora? I think himself? It, it's... Probably somewhere in the Phoenix lectures that when he it's probably in the early books or way early right. lectures that he talked about that stuff and definitely on the road when he was talking about it um, as as like lore. Like I'm sure he talked about the story early on and then he stopped telling it because, you know, maybe it wasn't true and give away too many secrets. But as we all know, he was doing LSD on the the, the boats when he was researching the OT levels. That's why you yeah. can't do LSD yeah. as a Sea Org member. I've never heard that. Where'd you hear that? That's probably from people on true. the boats. That's why. That's why, as a Sea Org member, you can't do LSD because why get the fast route to the OT levels if you can pay him money? Plus, where, did, might, where wait, did you hear that though? Because he's a con man. So I you, said, where? The, I said, where? Where did you? Where did hear I hear that, that? that? from people who were on the boat with him and stuff? Because he was tripped out of his mind. He was always also, on was all, there. also always. it was a gold. It was a gold expedition to like treasure hunt. It had nothing to do with researching things. Right, he was right. broke and he was mission tax evading in two different countries. Right. Oh, you're talking so. about the mission into time. Yeah. yeah. And he was oh, on every he was drug researching known also command. OT levels. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me just replace this light. Uh, keep talking about that. Aaron's light was going on, <laughs> but I also, I also have to go soon because I have to take my mom back to the airport, but. Sure. Yeah. You got to check in with Aaron. I'm whatever you need to do, but yeah, that, um, that part where the left, uh, him coming, yeah, he was on every drug known to man, Nora. I mean, he talks oh, about yeah. the pinks and grays and shit, and it's even in his diary. He was so amped up uh, on drugs constantly. And well, that's drinking, why he was so, so. anti drugs. I think, it, Nora, I also think. Well, also, it's I mean, let's be honest. Let's disclaimer let kids don't just randomly do drugs, please. I yeah, mean, you know. correct. <laughs> like, I think part not, of that, though. Let's not just be like, hey, drugs. Like, if you have people smoking pot and dropping acid and having the right trip, I think that would extract him from Scientology, too. So I think a lot of drugs were outlawed because he doesn't want people leaving the mind control. Plus, he doesn't want people. Yeah. It's do as I say, not as I do. So he was doing every drug known to man while trying to. It's a way to control people. Control their sex, control their what they can eat, what they can inhale, etc. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, last one here. Steve Britton. Assuming Travolta is closeted, the chance of yes. him coming out is about zero as long mm -hmm. as he remains a Scientologist. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
without question. coming out of anything. <laughs> Nora, do you think he would even care? It has to be on his radar that he's perceived that way with or without Scientology. So they're not using that as blackmail material. And surely he would be aware that that's not a big deal. He's a, just a believer in Scientology, right? That's not keeping him in there in any way, shape or form. Do you think it is? I think everything's keeping him in. Including yeah. not coming to terms with who he really is. I think he's he's a complete believer in all the things. I mean, it. he claims it saved his life, yeah. and he's a very loyal person. So he's not going to turn on something that he's been loyal to now for 40-plus years. Great point. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's call it a wrap. That was awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on a number Monday Night Live for SPTV. And actually, before we go, let me just plug everyone's channels again. On the bottom left, you can subscribe to Adam on YouTube at Adam the Angler. On the bottom right, we have Nora Ames. You can subscribe to Nora at Oh No Nora. And where's Doug's? Subscribe to Doug on YouTube at Dazed But Not Confused. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging in there with us, guys. Thanks, Aaron, for having us, man. Yeah, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here.